We are good. Good evening, everyone. The highlights of the new traffic accident. Beaver County man is being held for murder. What's going on, y'all? You're tuning in to the highest rated, most listened to podcast to ever grace the airwaves, and you're a better person for listening to us. <laughs> All right, maybe not, but you're really going to enjoy it anyways. This is Made to Motivate Podcast, and we'll be talking social media hot topics, pop culture news, the greatest in movies and music, and all things sports. Make sure you're following us on social media, at Made to Motivate Podcast, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can watch the show on our YouTube. Thanks for tuning in, and with that being said, let's get this show started. What up, guys? This is Made to Motivate Podcast, Season 3, Episode 4. Moving right along. Um, things look a little different tonight. Obviously, we don't have my buddy over here, Jesse. He is a hurt old man and is not joining us tonight. But I am joined, as always, by Chris, the film Free Kessinger. This is a monumental episode because I am the co-host this, for the night. This is very true. I think <laughs> this is the only episode we've done, just me and you before. Yes. I mean, we have Sean. Um, so we've got Sean visiting from hey, hey. Spotlight. Spotlight Customs is here. Um, he's our guest for the night. But I don't think me and you have ever done a show just together. Nope. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have Sean on. He does some amazing work with uh, custom car interiors. There's some stickers here. We'll post all of his Instagram and web sub- website links and everything in the um, YouTube on the Instagram and all that stuff, so you can follow him. Um, outside of that, anything new and exciting since last week, Chris? Um, well, Saturday I, I went out movie hunting as usual. Yes. You know, I do my trip every month. Um, went to a flea market in Warren all places yeah um, didn't even think they had one right but uh went there got about probably 20 movies there got another 10 out in hartville at a yard sale made off pretty well man yeah, yeah i've watched uh 12 of them so far and only one's been bad like has skipped okay so, quality wise but you're wasting a dollar on each one yeah so i saw your haul it was a lot you had spread out you had a good selection there too. yeah it's getting man I- i'm getting confined for space i gotta set those shelves up downstairs for sure and get that going did you pick those up yet uh yeah i did but i've got them laying in my garage right now until i clean out the basement a little more okay yeah. cool what about you um worked on the deck some the usual mm-hmm. worked on the deck uh almost done tried mini golfing what's today monday so we tried mini golfing yesterday we went to three different places everywhere's closed yeah um green family fun zone was eventually the only one open but we tried rolling greens was closed yogi bear was Saturday closed was their last day so they're done for the season yeah i was super bummed it was just like let's get out and do something because it was nice mm-hmm. um but yeah that's really it oh i had that helmet i don't know if i talked about that since no last show i was getting dropped off so i did that cranial band um so they came and picked that up on wednesday turned out so good too man that buckeye helmet that looked sharp yeah it was cool um that's really it it wasn't anything anything too exciting sean did you do anything exciting this past weekend no we just kind of hung out watched some football relaxed for once yeah yeah that kind of day football weekend it was good well um i think we just hop right into it we're gonna do made to motivate that's gonna be the segment we talk about sean and everything that he does and then we'll just kind of go from there um and see where the show takes us just do it don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it. Make your dreams come true. Just do it. All right. So made to motivate. So just do it. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, Shia. <laughs> That's my boss. Dude, I love Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> um, this segment is going to be dedicated to just kind of a passion of mine in general. It's not, I mean, Cars are kind of a passion of mine, but just the whole essence of what Sean does and what he has done. um, Let's talk about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the logo. I did the logo for Sean. That was, what, two years ago or so? I think a few more than that now. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. So, yeah, I did the logo for Sean a couple years ago. newer logo now. When you kicked off, that was when you did the actual shop when I did that. Yes. Yeah. So, but his story is just cool because it's, I mean, kind of that epitome of, you know, if you work hard, you can get to where you want to be. Um, and he took a passion to of it. his and yeah, I mean, really got to a pretty cool place. So what do you, what would you, what's your title? I guess, what is your, um, oh, like, what does your business card say? What does Sean O'Neill do? I guess owner. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing with upholstery is it's so many different kind of trades wrapped into one. Yeah. One day, like today I was sewing 
at the beginning of the day than taking things to UPS and then going over invoices with Dina yep. and then use the router for some wood and then stain yep. some wood. So, I mean, that's just business owners, all day. the hats. Yeah. Yep. So you started doing, so you went to school and you did um, some kind of, uh, what is that? Post-secondary or whatever yeah, for kind of um, interiors? Well, high school, I took a trades class for automotive. Okay. So that kind of sparked the gene. Um, but I kind of grew up, you know, around the car scene too. So, yeah. um, sorry, I get nervous, man. No, it's all good. <laughs> it's weird. It's cool. But, uh, what, what was your question again? So like, where do you, where'd you start at? So you, you, I know like reading your bio, you went to school local to this yes, area. Yes, so yes. in Akron, and then you, did they offer a program through the high school or was it not till yeah, after automotive you graduated? Through the high school. Then I went to Wyotech, which okay. is an automotive technical school. Okay. Where you learn collision, refinishing, um, chassis high performance engines yeah and then the last class i took was upholstery so this school is it's pretty intense yeah it's five days a week seven to four you know you got to show up every day clean shaven on time yeah um which i kind of liked and yeah that's you know, professional that's yeah. cool so it teaches you you know basics discipline yeah stuff. a little bit of business kind of mixed in there too but uh the upholstery class was the last one i took I just kind of had a knack for it. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, oh, this is, it just felt right. So, um, so the process to you, like schooling and everything, it never felt overwhelming for you at all? Like, oh, cause all you, were, you were so much into it. Oh, it did? Yeah. Okay. And then towards the end too, I worked a job. I was a dishwasher. Everyone should wash dishes. Oh, I it's got the worst it. job in the world. God, and yeah. you will, anything you do from there on out, it's like, it's, it's okay. Yeah. You know? Food service in general. Yeah. My first job was working at Backyard Burgers okay. over in Fairlawn when that yeah. was there. <laughs> And I mean, I did everything, dishes, food prep, mm -hmm. cashier drive through all that. And yeah. man, dishes is yeah awful. It smells. Worked it's inside at Swenson's. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's real work, it, you know? It is. It's underappreciated too. Yes. I think like, I mean, it's not glorious and it's not like a skilled trade, but like someone's got to do it and it's mm -hmm. not fun. So it teaches you the value of a buck. Absolutely. Sure. But as far as school being overwhelming, uh, not really because you know, you show up and you get to work on cool stuff and you, you know, you're kind of learning a trade. Yeah. Hopefully that can pay off down the road. And that's what I was asking. Like, so basically it was your passion took full drive. Like, you know, it didn't matter how much you were learning. It was, you were eager to learn. Yeah. I didn't even know it was a passion until, you know, you got to kind of try. That's why all the classes were good to take because collision refinishing, you see these guys hacking up a lung, right. they've been painting for 35 years. It's like, I don't know if I want to do that, yeah. you know? So it's also good to find out what you don't want to do. Absolutely. And then chassis, high performance engines. We cut up one of my trucks, back half and bagged it there. Yeah. Um, probably still a bad decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sold the truck before I could ever drive it uh, finished. So it's still kind of a sore spot in my heart. Oh, but yeah. It's my first that. car too. Oh, man. Yeah. The old S10. Yeah. But that is, you made a good point though. The finding out what you don't like to. I think that's yes. a really important thing because... Um, it's growing up. It's always like, what do you want to do when you grow up? Mm -hmm. I don't think as a kid, you really know that you kind of mm -hmm. got to go through some paces and do Especially some jobs. Especially as a teenager. Here's here. You're supposed to go to college, right? Pick something you want to do, yeah. yep. you know, and that getting into the trade, I think that's an untapped market as far as like, it's not, it's not really pushed. I think it's such an important area that mm -hmm. like we need to have, um, more focus on. Like, I think kids growing up, going through high school and stuff like I remember well, I mean, I went to Copley and we had some post-secondary stuff and there was kind of the stigma like it was lame. And I'm like, now I kind of regret it. I'm like, you mm -hmm. can get in, like they had the auto tech trade. There was culinary. We have a feel for had, it. Look at all the stuff you built here. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, at, the college thing is so pushed. But I mean, you learned to trade that look where it's taking you, you know, and there's yeah. so much stuff that you can take advantage of at that age. Um, so it's cool that. But also there's a lot it, of people that went to that school. And they're nowhere near Did cars. With it. Yeah. Yeah. Which I understand too. But it took me almost 10 years circle back around right. from when I was there to be here. And I feel like I'm just now starting. Yeah. You know, and I'm, we're in our third kind of official year with an official shop. Right. What would you attribute that to? Why do some people just fall between the cracks when it comes to this career? It's hard. Yeah. Just yeah. difficult work. Yeah. You really have to work for, you know, five years for nothing, really. Mm -hmm. for, you know, the first interior I did was $1,800. It yeah. was a full custom interior with a convertible top. And now a materials deposit is many more times that yeah. just for leather. Yeah. You know? So it's like I, I work for 10 cents an hour. Right. But that one job 
build that brand. It's probably ended up making us a lot more yep. over those 10 years mm-hmm. because you got to plant the seeds. Word of mouth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Any in any kind of business trade, I feel like with that, like um anything that's like an art form type thing or a service provider, like the, the, the photography and wedding stuff that I do. Like when I was first doing wedding photography and videography, I wasn't charging what I charge today. Yeah. Cause I you're was learning. charging like you're a still fifth learning. of it. Yeah. yeah. Cause they, you got to build a charge. portfolio. Yeah. You got to get people to realize your work. So prove yourself over and over. Absolutely. Um, so after your trade school, like, so you went to Wyoga Tech, is that what it was called? Correct. And Wyoming Technical what? School, I believe. And you got a degree in like the... Kind of a, you know, certified diploma of yeah, sorts. Like a trade type yeah. thing or whatever. And then after that, what did you do? Did you, because you said it took you a little while to come back around. Well, after that, I went right into working for an upholstery shop for probably three or four years. And they did all kind of the stuff we do now, hot rods. Yeah. Um, so that was good to learn. But um, after a while just kind of had to get like a real job with insurance and of course, you know, so got back into more of the corporate world, mm-hmm. ended up working for Goodyear as a chemical technician. Yeah, it's wild. And that's another thing. Like I think a lot of people just fall into, you know, like a pretty good job, you know, making Comfort. 40, 50 grand a year, mm-hmm. got good health insurance. Guilty as uh, charged. It's safe. Uh, yeah. yeah. I show up every day. Yep. Didn't have to work real hard. I was watching all the Netflix and yep. stuff like that. But once I got through the Netflix catalog, <laughs> I started searching on YouTube. I was like, man, this isn't, this doesn't feel Not good. Anything. Just sitting here. Yep. Um, so when I was at Goodyear, they have tuition reimbursement. So I went, started actual college. Okay. Kind of gave the car thing up for a minute. Yeah. And uh, so I was going to go for mechanical engineering because I wanted to design like race tires or something. That was the dream. Yeah. But I never got halfway through. Yeah because math class <laughs> oh yeah mm-hmm. yep so i came home one day from school this is after many months of well once i got through that netflix netflix catalog started watching youtube stuff yep and um reading more books because we'd have a lot of downtime uh worked at a junkyard before goodyear i'd find books and magazines and trunks of cars and just read them on my break yeah this was before smartphones right you know, or just at the beginning of smartphones, really. So I actually sat down and read and uh, just started to change the way I thought about things and said, man, time just going by. Yeah. I think we need to try and go for it again. Yeah. So come home from school one day after failing math class after math <laughs> class. Yeah. And I told my wife, I said, I'm not going back. And, and you know, this isn't a conversation right yeah <laughs> i'm just kind of telling you yeah and you know that's a hard pill to swallow for her too yeah but uh then just started to build up the upholstery stuff on the side again yep and after many years of building relationships uh finally my one of my business mentors he said just get the boat as close to the dock as you can and then jump yeah so we kind of lined some things up financially and kind of made a plan for sure and it's never the plan never goes the way you want it to. No. <laughs> no. Well, credit to you for uh, being able to, you know, locate and, and distinguish that monotony in your life and, mm-hmm. you know, seek something else to, to satisfy, you know, what's beating yeah. inside what you want. Absolutely. For sure. Um, did you do, uh, was there like apprenticeship type stuff you do? Because like, that's not an easy trade. I mean, obviously you went to school for no, it. No, the but first shop that, I worked for, going back to making no money for years. Yeah. You know, you pay... That school was expensive too. It was right. twenty grand plus, plus room and board and all that, you right. know. But and it was a year and less than two years, yeah. so it was intense, quick school, which is good. You get it over with, but then you go to work for that first shop for eight bucks an hour. Yeah, you know, you kind of learn from there. Yeah. So then you fast forward ahead to, you're doing it because you were so when you were at Goodyear, you you decided I'm dropping out of school, I'm gonna get back into doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the scissors tattooed on the middle finger. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> um, and I remember first following your stuff and you were doing it just out of your garage, right? Correct. Yep. yep. Nights and weekends. Yep. So, I mean, that's a trade that, cause I mean, I used to sew and stuff. I didn't know that. Not to like, I, yeah, I used to do, um, when I did my clothing and stuff like that, Okay. I used to make handmade like bags and stuff and really? all kinds of crazy things. But, and then I look at your stuff and I'm like, Holy shit. I mean, I had no try, no trade or education mm-hmm. on it. It was kind of like a teach yourself, watch some YouTube and stuff. That's all it is. Yeah. Really? But I watch, and- I watch what you do and I'm like, 
it's on a whole nother level. And when you say upholstery, it's not just like you guys got to follow the page and like look because I mean you're fabricating it's stuff. Yes. It's like insane. That's what I tell people. Now it's ninety percent fabrication. Yeah, the last ten percent is stitching and covering it in leather. It's you know? super crazy. Yeah. So you get to um, you're doing it out of the garage and stuff. What what got you to the point where you're like, all right, this is it. Like the I'm, I'm quitting my yeah. Yeah. Just got so backed up. Mm-hmm. When I was taking vacation days to work at home. Which is nice because mm. you get paid vacation and, and you're making money. Yeah. Except for you're using vacation time to not actually have time off. Well, which is exhausting. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, you're making you're double dipping. You're getting yeah. the vacation pay and then you're making some money at home, which is cool. But um you were was there like one big gig or like job that really solidified things for you? Because I know yeah, you've there's done one several. big uh shop we do a lot of work for, Rose, Rod and Custom that's here in town. Okay. They're right down the road from here. Yeah. Are they off of uh ninety one? Uh Albrecht. Okay, yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So you were doing work for yeah, them? Yeah, they like just approached me. So on, it kind of worked out when I was still working for a good year on my Christmas break. Yeah. I could go in there and do some things for them. And, uh, yeah, their shop kind of grew and exploded. And yeah. gratefully, they took me along for the ride. So. Cross promotion. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, local, you got to support that and stuff. So you did it. Yeah, it was just kind of good timing. They were kind of looking for a different route for their interior stuff. and yeah. So just right place, right time. Absolutely. How long were you out of uh, your garage before you made the jump to the shop? Well, we were trying to find shop space, which is always hard to do. Yeah. And uh, the guy who we rent from uh, was building, adding on to one of his units. So we just kind of timed it out. Yeah. You know, when is this going to be done? And then uh, I think I quit maybe a month or so and then moved in. Nice. So, yeah. And then you started really hit the ground on. running. Yeah. Yep. It's wild. Some of the stuff you've done. What's the uh, best or coolest one you've done? You've done a lot of stuff that's been at like summit know. racing or like cars that have been at their shows and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Been on the turntables and some cool magazines. Yeah. And uh, there's that one charger you did. That I know is real cool. Yeah. Challenger. Our challenger. Yeah. Yep. Challenger. Nice. Carbon RT. Legit, yeah. Um, and then I know I was following one, one job you did. It was those, uh, the like camel leather seats that you fully freaking made. Yes. That was the uh, Sal of C2 based off of a a Lamborghini. This guy made his own kind of bespoke supercar around that platform. Just amazing what he did on really with very little money and people around him. Yeah. And it ended up on Pebble beach, which was kind of a prestigious car show. Yeah. Yeah. On their concept lawn. These designs, are they your ideas or are they the customer's ideas? Is it half kind of half. mixed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like the, the Salaf, um, he kind of had, he had leather picked out. Yeah. Uh, the design, he fabricated most of the parts himself. So yeah. we were just kind of there at the end to wrap it up and execute on his vision. Other people say kind of, here's a kernel, do what you want. We've right. also had guys that come in with binders, stacks full of, you know, ideas. samples. Yeah, it has to look exactly like this. And Jeez. yeah, those are always a little more labor intensive. Yeah, it's more <laughs> strenuous, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. You know exactly what, when they know exactly what they want, there's like not room for yeah. messing up or whatever. You but know? the favorite has to be um, from the Detroit Autorama this past year. We got a grade eight flag, um, which is kind of like the grade eight. They picked the top eight vehicles yeah. um, of the show to compete for the Riddler award, which is kind of like the Oscar award for the car scene. Oh, wow. So we kind of, we got a nomination, didn't get the big award, yeah. but uh, yeah, to be there and experience that with those guys was really cool. Uh, That's but l- awesome. Like the Oscars, only so many films get nominated a year and oh, yeah. how many are made <laughs> and you're in that upper we echelon. We got to go to the Riddler's ball. Yeah. They took us with them to the Riddler's ball. Wow. Uh, you, I don't know if you've ever heard of Rutledge Wood. I'm not trying to name drop, but no, I don't uh, think so. You know, Chip Foose is at the, a couple tables over. Foose, yeah. yeah, just the guys, the guys that are That's the guys. Cool. Yeah, I was gonna say like, because I mean, your your level of exp- expertise is up there, and I'm like, it doesn't feel like I'm like this dude needs to be on a TV show. Like, you could easily be on one of those That's custom car the goal. shows. I, I'm like, just have a guy kind of film all the time. Yeah, uh, we're kind of wrapping up a uh, truck build that we documented along the way nice so you know but does that just go on your time. website or do you have a youtube that you post stuff on i have a youtube i just haven't made anything yet yeah just scared of yeah doing this so being here is a good inspiration <laughs> right you know you got like 
any outlet, especially like to your level, because you have, I mean, obviously you have what it takes quality and work ethic and, and, um, doing the work. Cause I mean, to be able to quit a career, especially working for someone like Goodyear to jump into it, it says a lot. You but know? what was the other option to not do it and always wonder what would have happened? Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, I can go get the job back. I left on good terms. Right. You know, yep. as long as you don't burn all your bridges. Yeah. Oh yeah. A couple true. get torched along the way. Of course. <laughs> you know? No, always leaving things professional and like jumping in, you've got to do it. Yeah. Um, but you've gotten to the point where obviously like I, if you utilizing those outlets, I was like us getting into the YouTube and wanting to just kind of expand further because any of those, they're free. Mm -hmm. anywhere you can get that reach and that type of stuff like i love watching you know there's and there's definitely a crowd obviously for cars oh yeah you if you post some videos of you like a start to finish obviously not a three hour video but you know you break yeah, it up yeah, or whatever you, you know down. and you in in a start a before and after video of an interior people eat that stuff See, i try up, and man. stop to make like little dumb time lapse videos yeah. here and there but i just don't have the time to kind of film it myself and yeah you gotta have somebody do i'm it. worried about it every screw we need you know down to the yeah ticky tack stuff absolutely i think that's good though because you're so focused on a job that you don't want to make an error in that job yeah. you know really like the, the youtube but there's stuff. a trade-off right you gotta i mean i yeah. think in today's world you almost have to make stuff yeah because yeah. it's you know the phone's ringing every day but no one still knows who we are right you know yeah, that's how do you acquire? Is it just word of mouth? It really is. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, Instagram. Yeah, we've made it. I I've made a ton of money through that. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. See, like I mean, full interior jobs and. Yeah, dude. You know, a guy's grandson sees us on there and says, "Oh, you're looking for an interior shop? Here you go." Right. And then scroll through. You can see what we do. And yep. Yeah, I refer people all the time. Anybody that asks about that it really, stuff. it really makes a difference. There's a guy that said, "I think he just hit you up." Um, Corey. Yep. Yeah. He commented yeah, on my before post. we even got here. I know it's a '57 Bel Air, um, you know, stock install. There you go. And it's before we even made the we even the made the episode. Yeah, is that the guy who was asking questions on your Facebook? I was like, come on, bro. <laughs> I was yeah, like, he's supposed to come by this week. He comments Looking on the forward post. Looking to meeting you. What's his number? Where is he located? Talk to him. Like, <laughs> I tagged his page for a reason. <laughs> Click it. I don't know. Google. I need that info. Google. Uh, no, but yeah, a YouTube would be cool. I mean, I would definitely watch that stuff. Um like a podcast too i almost yeah like the dream is to have someone where i can walk in like i did here yeah okay it's ready to go yeah like i don't i want to learn how to do it but it's easy i, I show do you it. all right yeah i show you it's, I mean, it's super easy i literally bought all the stuff and just like mess with like our first episode is a little right. rough because it was I had no idea yeah. i literally plugged the stuff in and said hey we're gonna record okay. i had no idea what i was doing after one episode like Everything after that was smooth sailing. Like right. I learned nice. from it. No, um, good quality stuff. You know, get a get a mixing board. Um, you said that one can make beats too. I'm yeah. So this is so you you have like your sound um, buttons on the side there. Mm -hmm. So like we have them programmed to be like our different segments. You can put in like you know whatever kind of like sound bites and stuff you want to have on there i have to have this in i'm gonna piss on your couch <laughs> that's jesse from one episode so like you can plug all of your stuff in there and then so you could make this like a drum guitar or whatever and then you can just hit up so you can do a lot with it but you want to have the good quality so right. podcast easily yeah and doing like a car podcast or something yeah it's such a huge community. my uncle had a great idea we were sitting around a bonfire and uh he kept a list of every single car he had yeah and, you know Probably not the first guy to think of it, but still really is called an autobiography, right? Oh, so I have wow. the Instagram page yep. autobiography. So like a podcast kind of, you know, that'd be cool with that thread through it. But yep. I got to get the uncle's permission first. So to, I don't want to steal his idea. His idea yeah. I think one other thing too is uh, chemistry between hosts. You have to have to like, okay. it has to feel natural, like what you're presenting to the audience. Yeah. Um, it has to feel like, you know, basically People you and a bunch of your friends, bullshit. like they've stumbled across you and your friends sitting somewhere and having a conversation. Yeah. yeah. That's the easiest right. way it'll come across to you and to them. Yeah. Finding your niche is not a, like is the a, old radio voices. Yeah. Hey, hey. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's people that get by with that, but like the ones that I've checked out, I enjoy the most when it's, when it feels like to Chris's point, you're just listening in on a yeah. conversation. They're not talking to you, the listener. Mm -hmm. You're just listening on what right. they've got going on. Um, those ones I find really cool. And then um, the like crime show ones, I, I get sucked yep. into a lot yeah. of those. Cereal. Yeah, road the cereal. Trips. Yeah, those are great for road trips. 
Um, but a podcast would be really cool for you. You guys have a lot of that market is just big and it's like coming back in this area too. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it's just like the car scene. And, it's crazy how many yeah. are around here. You know, it yeah. really is. And you do more than just car. I mean, you do boats. You do. I'm trying mean, to get away from boats. Too much work. If you have a nice boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad trade. <laughs> <laughs> we can go down that road. Oh, Woo-wee. God. But yeah, I yeah, gotta imagine that's tough. Boats are right. like a whole nother. I drilled a hole through my cousin's boat. Here, yeah. I said it. We got it fixed. <laughs> Not one hole, multiple uh, holes. Whoops. Damn. Didn't sink. You know? That's all that matters. That's right. I'm sorry, Nick. <laughs> Nick is actually good friends with Ryan. He's my cousin, too. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, is it mainly just automobiles and just cars? Yeah, for the most part. Motorcycle yeah. seats once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd like to get to a point where one day we just do kind of back-to-back, one full custom. Yeah. You know, nice hot rod at a time. Right. So just line them up. Yeah. What do you do? Like, what is a normal job taker? Like, how how booked up do you get? Are oh, you like man. booked out? At the moment, maybe uh, six weeks or so. Not too far. Okay. I did slow down with all the COVID stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the big car builds they get put on pause, which I understand. Right. Can't do know. shows and stuff. They're no, the about. IX Center just closed for good. Yeah, we were talking Dude. about that on yeah. an episode it's too. Gonna, we, kind we of be a big it. hit. That's rough. Hopefully somewhere will pick up though. Maybe like a John S. Knight Center somewhere yeah. in Akron takes over some of those shows. Which is perfect for the big car show. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, I used to, I go to that every year. That's a yeah. that's a real big bummer. Um, but as far as time frame, yeah. I don't know. A full custom interior could it be anywhere from a hundred hours Jeez. in a simple truck build to two hundred and fifty to three hundred mm-hmm. hours. Wow. You know, if you're talking full trunk Jeez. seats, that's insane. Door panels headliner is that do you because we make everything from scratch right is it you price it i mean how do you even you don't have to get it's into hard. pricing but how do you even like price something like that out you have an hourly rate and yeah you say, figure out the materials yeah. and all that i mean and over time be. i've kept pretty good track record yeah. you know of my shifts so right you get better at estimating as you go to for sure so you don't charge eighteen hundred dollars for a job know, over and over again right, right. What uh, do you find the most difficult aspect as far as the business side of, of owning your own business? Um, oh, man. You know, we went over the cross promotion, obviously, but yeah. what do you find is the most difficult aspect of keeping it all together? Just the day, what someone told me if it wasn't for, and I'm not talking, you know, if it wasn't for customers and vendors, business would be easy. Right. You know, because you need them to. The day ends business, at but. 7 p.m., but then you're home on your phone answering questions or trying to talk with people yep. or just like today, you know. We need to get some help too one of these days, but so I'm not taking stuff to UPS and right. you know, there's ways to iron out some of those wrinkles too, mm. but just, yeah, keeping track of, you know, you have to be projected out. I have to see farther down the road at anybody, you know, how much leather are we going to need? Yeah. Do we need lights or speaker wire or carpet and yeah. screws Seven and glue and foam? And, yep. Yeah. And is, um, your wife, is she working with you now too? Yeah, she helps. She was in there today. Yeah. Uh, helping uh, keep track of the records. Yeah. Um, does invoicing and Let's see, I thought our website. She, had... she does a ton for us. I'd be, I would not be where I'm at without this woman. Hey, yeah. there's the kudos. Got to have Love that doll. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I thought I remember uh, a couple of years ago or whatever, when you got the actual shop that she had kind of come on and to at least help mm-hmm. out a bit and stuff. So mm-hmm. that's, that's nice to have that support because yes. it's strenuous as a business owner. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is when, and it's not like you can just turn it off. Like you said, you know, you're at the shop till seven, but then you're, I think you have to learn how to though at some point or else it's just going to kill you. I got to that point. Cause I was getting burnt out and I got, yeah, to what, you had a, the t-shirt shop and mm-hmm. Dude, I was too doing much. a t-shirt shop. I was doing, I mean, the, the photography and the videography and the screen printing is so much, but I was getting to a point where I had to have that turn off switch. Cause I mean, I've worked it's like when you were a good year, I'm working full time and then doing all that. Mm-hmm. And people don't care if they want business they, and they think they're, and they are, but they think, well, if he wants my business, he's going to answer. But I mean, I'd be getting yeah. messages on Facebook at one thirty in the morning. Like, and then like not responding right away. And I'm like, well, it's one thirty in the morning. Like I got to wake up in <laughs> five hours to go to work. Yeah. So I'm sorry that I'm not answering your message right now, but I got to a point where like I used to, and I was just exhausted all the time. And I finally just like cut my phone, like my Facebook page stuff off. And I had like an auto reply. I was like, I answer messages within 24 mm-hmm. hours between nine and five. 
you know, like, That's smart. so I'll reply to you as soon as I get up in the morning or whatever. Well, it's, us, us to tra- it's up to us to train the people that we want to do business with is this right. is, it's a you business. You have your hours, have your hours. And yep. I think people will respect it. Absolutely. And if you choose to respond sooner or whatever, cool. But like, yeah. Cause you, you don't want to burn yourself out, especially in a, I mean, your trade part of it's fun. Physical. Like I, I kind of like going back and forth though, you know? Yeah. Sure. That's kind of half the, uh, half the fun for me. Is, yeah. As long as you find the downtime and you don't burn yourself out. Cause it's, it's so easy to do. Well, we know we went on vacation this summer and, uh, I passed out. I think it was from heat exhaustion and just mm-hmm. being over, you know, they say when you finally stop working is when you get sick. Yep. I think some of that was involved too. Absolutely. So it catches yeah. up to you when oh, you're yeah. go, go, going like yeah. the adrenaline's going and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it, it is true. Cause like I've been over the last like two, three weeks, I feel like I've just been nonstop between like doing this and working and working on my deck and like just doing stuff. Mm-hmm. And then like over the last couple of days, I like slowed down and I feel like all I've done is sleep. Like it just yeah. fucking hit me. Like it was like a wall. Sleep you're up is here important. and then you, you go straight down to, to settle. Yeah. Like you're not smoothing the process. Yep. Like that's. And then like my body, like just, it's like I lost all motivation and I got to find that even balance. I think that's cause... okay too though. Right. There's no balance. <sighs> They say there's no balance. You're always balancing. So you're always going to be kind of out of whack one way or another. That's you true. can't have it all good at one time. Yeah, yeah. it's very true. Um, hardest moment or ever question what you're doing or like ever wanted to go <laughs> all back? All the time. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I was talking to another buddy of mine was in the shop and you could tell he's having one of those days where you're questioning all your life decisions. Why did I even, you know, yep. it was nice to be at Goodyear kicking your feet up. Yeah. You know, it is this moment. We got to enjoy what you're doing. Like, yeah, I got to that point where, like you, where you said earlier, where you get in that corporate gig and you got paid time, you know, paid vacations and benefits, and that's kind of where I got to where I work now. Um, and but I, it, it turned into something that I enjoy. But I did get comfortable, and sometimes I think about that. I'm like, because people always ask, like, why don't you do what you were doing full time? And like, I teetered on it back and forth. And then I was just like, I don't know if that's like, the, I, cause I had the shop in the falls for, for mm-hmm. a couple of years and I was working solely self-employed. Um, and it was great, but it was stressful, man. And like, unless you can find good help, that was like, for what I did, I needed help. Like got to a point where I was on that brink of this could be a big deal and I need to find the help to do it. Or I'm going to have to like scale down because I can't mm-hmm. manage it at this level anymore on my own and trying to find people that, want to work and like have the passion because when you're in like something like what you do or like what i was doing like manufacturing and you're selling a good and you're selling your and name and your goods, brand all yours were custom it's all too. custom like you can't it's got to be done right to be the good the right person yeah yep. you know so i struggled with that in your line like how many people did you have i did everything myself so you never did find anybody no, to help you no i could never find it i mean i had people that would help like so when i did the truck I'd have friends that would come like work on the truck. But as far as like right. printing shirts and all that, you can't find. I mean, it's so hard to find. Yeah. What it's not a glorious trade by any means. It's a lot of work. Um, what people want to make, like at my level, I couldn't afford to pay someone what they want to make to do that as like a full time job mm-hmm. or whatever. It's it's so hard to find that balance. Um, I've been there too, right? Because we do have absolutely we have a part a guy that works for us part time and he does awesome work. Yeah. But there's also been times where no fault of his own. Yeah. But just sometimes you underbid a job and you're like, there goes the profit. Yeah. Which is okay because you have to learn how to yeah. have an employee too. For sure. Yeah. And what you do, I mean, when you have someone or like what he does, does he, is he involved in the actual, I don't know what consider it called like manufacturing or fabrication or is it more of like, Oh yeah. He does. He yeah. did, And you're like teaching so him or is he traded? He's already like, he skilled. came in and kind of knew okay. the lay of the land. Yeah. He could hop on a sewing machine and pretty much go where I was like, thank God. That's cool. Yeah. I was going to say, or a set of like, stock seat covers we put on, I say, here's the seat frames and the seat covers and they came out perfect. Nice. You know, that's cool. Yeah. Cause that's, I mean, it's not an easy trade. Like sewing is, it's very tedious, you very. know, and like, I mean, you got to make me sewing straight lines and stuff, mm-hmm. especially you're doing car interiors. Mm-hmm. There's no like, there are days when you shouldn't be sewing, yeah, you know, you're exhausted. And yeah. You're, you're just in a bad place. Yeah. But, your head's somewhere else. You know, you got to kind of yeah. take care of the nuts and bolts of things I've learned. Yeah. And then you can, it's easier to be creative and laser focused. And, right. To me, it seems like just another form of art. Like everything's meticulous. You know, you have to take your time and, mm-hmm. you know, stitch by stitch. It really is. I well, mean, going back to what you said, where you were doing all these different things, 
I think that's when you have to like dive deeper into one or two Focus niches. On one thing, yeah. yeah. So that's where I want to get to the one full custom because to manage, you All know, tools. yeah, just uh, a stock build or a stock restoration and then a boat here. Yeah. You know, that's where you're chasing materials all over the place. And yeah. Do you, you run into an issue with, do you run into issues where you're like lose work because you can, cause it's only you and you can only do one thing at a time. Like you can only really focus on, I feel like in that trade people, I think in a Not lot of things really. we're impatient. Like people want, like I want to get my car, car done. World, a lot. If, if the customer has been around the build process before they know it takes some time. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like that was something I struggled with. Was like people want stuff now. I'm like, I'm one man mm-hmm. show. If I got a 600 t-shirt order, yeah, I got to finish that. It's gonna take, you it's gonna take me time, you yeah. know. Like I, I got to work on that before I can. And then they, mm-hmm. you know, it's underappreciated. Like Chris said, it's everything's an art form, you know. And I think that art as a whole, for a lot of for a, a lot of people, is underappreciated. They don't understand the time that goes into stuff. They see the finished product and they don't realize how you get to that point. And uh, it's interesting. Some people will come into the shop and see some things we're doing. Yeah. And they're, you know, broken down into different pieces and they're, they say, Oh, I didn't know all that yeah. went into it. Right. You know, that's like watching your stuff on your page. Like I had no idea. Like I see your foam <laughs> forms and like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like uh, the one car you did is like a gray and blue interior, I think. And you fully did like the door panels and like is that the Cadillac. I, I think, think it might've been. Yeah. And like the full fabric, like fully made new car. What is that called? What's the interior of a door called? Interior like, of a door. Like door the, panel. Yeah, the door yeah. panel. Like complete custom door panels. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck, man? I mean, you just take some plastic and cut it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> All this is where I think the YouTube channel would come in handy because right, yeah, once people yeah. understand what goes into everything, yeah. they'll have more appreciation mm-hmm. for it. Yeah. And I think that's the missing link. It's kind of perfect for the, you know, Instagrams and the YouTube. It is, and man. It's a visual. I get sucked visual down that YouTube hole, man. Oh, yeah. I watch manufacturing and like build stuff I love like all anything like I watch people build decks build guns yep. car stuff just seeing all of the intricacy that goes into that kind of stuff well it's a lifesaver too as oh a business, yeah you know because I have to have all the answers at the end of the day so it's right you know YouTube you're in a university absolutely yeah. that's true Shoot, that's how I <laughs> that's how I built this basement mm-hmm. YouTube yeah. I did all the electric, everything. You can become a master carpenter from, from YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Watch a couple clips of a video. Buy a tool. Yeah. Buy another tool. It's wild, man. You know? YouTube is like the greatest thing ever when it comes to any kind of DIY yeah. or a building. Um, so your your so next step goal is one build at a time. That's just getting booked up or getting big enough jobs. Yeah, How because to- there's, you know, there's not uh a bunch of people building these things you right. know all over you know there's a handful of them that do awesome great work yeah how but, do you uh, so i mean is your stuff primary from around this area yeah there's like a, you gotta uh, tap that market i mean you've been doing it for a shops. long time that's what it takes it, you know it's all relationships yeah you know and they'll give you one job and then if you do well on that you'll get the next one yeah. and the next one so it might take two or three experiences with somebody until right. they give you you know the giant the yeah. trust. Yeah. It always, is, it always blows my mind. Like to think about that, that line of work and <clears throat> to be able to do it full time. Like that there's that many people consistently needing mm-hmm. the work done. There's more than I could ever do. And that's wild. Yeah. I, you don't really think about that. Yeah. You know, you don't start see, doing upholstery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Keep sewing. Come work for you. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. I mean, serious. If you got people, Hey, I mean, cause that's the thing. If you can get more, if you can get someone like full time on to your skill mm-hmm. level, I mean, you could mm-hmm. sky's the limit at that point. And we work with another guy, his name's Sean too. And he's got other kind of fabrication skills that I don't. So we have, you know, yep. that's also, you know, you get to work with all these other craftsmen yeah, and learn more stuff. It almost kind of speeds up your learning process once you absolutely, you know, get in with some of these guys. Very counterintuitive because yeah. you're all learning off of each other yeah. and it creates a lot of good dynamics yeah. and sets up that shop chemistry. Yeah. yeah. yeah you don't have to cool. compete you know it's all yeah. work together you gotta get you on uh some tv show i watched that um i don't know if, I ever, want that. I don't know if I ever want that in my life no <laughs> no dude i would love it there's no drama you know it's just oh, turn the music on and make some Do stuff and, yeah <laughs> just for like one season it's gonna be a boring show yeah 
you know you got they 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 turn yeah. it on for you they figure it out you just see dina yell at me from time to time and- right <laughs> we almost did it with the, um we got approached when i was doing the fashion truck um they reached out to us about doing a cross country fashion truck show that would be, we were cool. be from new york oh. to california we had to make a video like application video for whatever i don't think they ever got the funding it was going to be from discovery or something like okay. that but we were going to do uh you'd start in new york and then there were several stops along the way and at each stop you had a task you had to do or whatever with building or making a shirt or whatever um and we saw i was like man i'm all for it yeah you know, take off work what for, an adventure yeah uh several months or whatever and do it i'm like i'd be all for that i tried to get on the, the circle i did try to get on real world one year like i think that'd be so fun even just for like one season just be a cool experience and you get to dodge massachusetts so that's yeah. there absolutely <laughs> my sister and i auditioned for the amazing race once. did you yeah we went it's to david cool. busters and got hammered and it wasn't it was like we were not getting on this show yeah yeah it'd be so fun though i think a lot of stories start like that <laughs> right we had a great idea yeah i'm big into that like i love like i do the vlog channel i don't do it as often as i'd like but i enjoy that like making video process yeah. and like showing how stuff's done I you know gary really cool. b right oh yeah you know that's kind of he's wild you document over document over what is it document don't create or something yeah uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what he says. I but anyway, remember. you know, that's one of the things yeah. I would watch when I was back at Goodyear. Mm-hmm. Um, that my, just kind of helped me change. Like My big one is Casey Neistat. Chance. Have you heard of Casey Neistat? I have. He's, a, watched a he's lot one I time. really enjoy. Yeah. He does, uh, He does like almost daily, like a, a vlog. Mm-hmm. But um, he's, he did, he's done movies. He does TV shows. But now he's got 11 million people following but what him on What did they YouTube do? They just and, started doing it one day. You know? Yep. Yeah. And it's, no he's different. got the right personality for it. Mm-hmm. He just, and he just really films what he does on a daily basis. Yeah. It's not anything crazy, but I right. mean, the dude's making a career fully off yeah. YouTube. I'm like, I need this in my Wild life. world. I just want to do that. That's like a goal. Sometimes that's compelling to people, you know, that adventurous spirit to live every day. That's, you know, that's all it takes. Simplicity. There's also yeah. some days where I was like, no one needs to see any of what's going on. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? <laughs> Yeah, we joke. I'm an emotional mess and <laughs> stressed you know, out. Yeah, I want to quit. And- We're starting to see why you don't want the TV show. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I say that now, but you got camera crew following you around. And you're yeah. Because like, when you're making something like that, yeah. I don't want to be watched. But, but if you- there's a, you know, there's always somebody in there, yeah. whether it's someone helping us work or yeah. if you're at another shop, you have to perform when Absolutely. people are watching. So, yeah. I don't think that would be an issue, but. Yeah, it's just it's just. It'd be good to show stress. the bad too. I mean, it's it's part of it. Absolutely, trial and error. People yeah. got to realize that goes into running a business, you know, because yeah. it's not. It's definitely not all glorious. It's a lot easier to work for somebody it's else. Very than work little for yourself. glory, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's a lot of stress. It's late nights. Yeah. Hey, if I don't book a car, I ain't freaking paying the rent mm-hmm. or the mortgage this month. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's a lot to that. So, what is your um? What's your plan for next step outside of just booking up your full builds back to back? I don't know. We kind of keep tossing back and forth of like getting the five acres of land with a house and a shop out in the country. Yeah. Um, or do we go get a nice commercial building or, you know, yeah. I don't know what the right next move is really. So the land and the, yeah, that's what I, that's the route I'd be going. I know that's definitely the, that's route the quicker way deal. to get everything yeah. in one, but you know, yeah. Is that good for the relationship? Yeah. And, you know, location. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough too. Cause then it, have to, if we find the right place, we'll know it. And yeah. If it's on property, then it's tough. Cause there's like never that separation. Right. You know, like if you're working and your shops on your property, that's kind of tough, but man, build a gate. I was yeah, listening. Who, who, like, did you make the gate? I, I was listening to an episode. Someone made an iron gate from one of you guys. Oh, oh um, I have him make a gate for the, what was that? I know what you're talking about. Keep these people out of here. Oh, God. I know what he's talking about, too. Yeah, I, I feel like it was recent. Yeah, it was because I was just poking in to see what you guys. I can't remember. See what the vibe was around here. Yeah, but I think that would be cool. That's something I've always, I always wanted to do is have land and have like a pool barn, like mm-hmm. car shop, and tinker around out there, like a wood build, wood shop and stuff. And having it all like in one location, yeah. I feel like it'd be nice. But then also having that commercial building that's my dream is to just have a warehouse with yeah you know a place clean room for the cars a shop with all the tools right maybe a little gym in the corner yeah you know do you ever think to expand outside of 
and obviously it would it would take bringing on other people but to like a full car place like paint think, shop and no, stuff like that no no to get the amount of skills and time yeah and resources it takes yeah just to focus build on these kind of cars and make all of the components work together is yeah way out of the realm of my yeah skills yeah yeah i mean that would obviously that would turn into a whole nother realm of business ownership right. where now it's employing people yeah, i still like to do the work that's the thing you know yep if you want to be the guy that steers the ship that's you know that was my passion when i did it more so than i do now mm -hmm. is actually doing it yeah. like that's what that was the fun the things, you know yeah. like i want to actually be the one to do it because the, the glory and the business ownership is knowing seeing like what you've created you know that's yeah. that's why i love building doing the deck building this basement like seeing where it was and where you got it to and knowing like i did that mm -hmm. that's the fun like yeah. very satisfying your job would not be as cool if it was just like all right hey joe go do that car yeah, as much as i back. like like you know, talking to people and yeah. putting everything together, it's when you actually get to the work is absolutely it's the good stuff. Get, get in there. For uh, someone who was in your shoes, like where you used to be once you started this business up, what's one piece of advice that you would give them? Once I started? Yeah, like basically when you started taking on the business side of your own model. Man, you just kind of have to do it and, uh, well, get help too, wherever you can. Don't be afraid to ask for help, basically. Yeah, no, you can't do it alone, yeah, you know, yeah. no matter no matter what you think it takes an army of people to run this little business that we have, you sure, know, yeah. whether it's, you know, Dina running the thing or all the guys that help us, all the other contractors and vendors. And mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's about good advice. And just do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Have the determination to yeah. follow through. Be willing to put your head down for a little while and not expect anything in return. Yeah. You know, I think that you, know, you got to set yourself up for success um and go all in you know like yeah. you gotta have the support system it takes time like or set it up around yourself so you can go all in with yeah. less risk of falling yeah you know it's 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 one of those things where i think it's it's not for everyone no. uh, and you really need to i don't i don't want to sound like a negative negative about it but like you have to really you've got to have the the skill the trade the niche to do it like not everyone has the ability to want to be a business owner i kind of take that back to like when i used to um when i was really into the clothing just started got the truck and everything and like we used to do show promoting and stuff in akron um i used to host shows set it up at the venue sell the tickets all that in this area fashion shows uh music okay so we would do uh rap shows rock shows all that kind of stuff i would do like thursday's lounge yeah. and but like so many people want to do it but they don't want to put the work in or they don't want to invest in it that's just like one niche that i'm familiar with it in like you got to be willing to you got to know what it is put the work in it costs money to make money you got to mm -hmm. invest in your craft invest mm -hmm. in the time like it took you a while to get where you want to be but you were committed to it you knew that's what you wanted to do and you got there you know people are so quick to want to give up um and you got to surround yourself with the right people too, which I think is a big one. I don't know if it's just our area. I've always like struggled with, you know, friends that are in, in wanting to be business owners or wanting to get into entrepreneurship and stuff. And there's something about this area where people are, are difficult to support each other. I don't know. It's like an Akron thing. It's super weird or it's probably everywhere. I think it's, it's especially in Akron. <laughs> <laughs> there's like this special thing where people find like people have such a hard time wanting to, uh, to see people do good. And I think just if you're going to go down that route, if you're going to go and want to work for yourself, just be willing to stick it out for yourself. You know, mm -hmm. it can't be for anybody else. It's, it's a lot of work. It may also be, you know, when people put out that kind of stuff, they got something else going on too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, they're either little envy. That's what I think a lot jealousy of jealousy or, you know, yep. Um, but it's tough, you know, like, it, like you said earlier, it's not, it's not all glory. Like there's a well, lot do you feel, behind the scenes. How do you feel after being there, shutting it down and then going, I don't want to say step back, but yeah. like back into the corporate job. Work. Yeah. So I like, I'm, I'm less stressed where I'm at now, mm -hmm. by all means. I think that's just a given because I, Happier? I, um, I would say for a lot of it, I've gotten myself to a point where so before I was so stressed over that, like, I was just so go, 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 go. And it wasn't in such a niche like you. Like when I was doing t-shirts, everyone, like 
I was one of the first in the area to like really be doing it. And then it just became like cool. Right. And like everyone was like, yeah. I want to start a t-shirt company. I want to start a t-shirt company. And people were doing crappy so work. Many and shop, yeah, Akron, there's only so many Akron, Akron designs shirts. and shirts you right. can do. And people want what's inexpensive, you know? So if I had a shirt for like 20 bucks, we'd be at a show and people were like, oh, well, they're selling shirts for 10 bucks. Why is it, why are you so expensive? I'm like, these are, I handmade these. Mm-hmm. I, did, I spent the hours designing the design, printing the shirts, call, paying for this truck. Like there's expense that goes into it. Mm-hmm. And that's where I go back to like, people don't appreciate the art. You're not just buying a t-shirt. It's not like you go to Target and they buy a hundred thousand of them from China. You're getting a piece of your soul, you're, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, hours of work and time, you know? So that was frustrating. Cause when yours rip after one wash, you're going to want mine. Yeah. Trust me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Where my designs, you wash that shirt 200 times and that design's never going anywhere. It's, you know, it's hand done. Um, so, you know, I was at that point, um, where I was, it got so over flooded. So then I kind of started adjusting my niche to do different things and got more into like graphic design and doing mm-hmm. stuff for other businesses and outsourcing and, um, printing shirts for other businesses. What's it like doing the best now? creative oh gosh i really enjoyed i got back into drawing so i bought an ipad about a year ago outstanding drawer and i just Isn't got crazy yeah i just um, i can't even put yeah. that together i have to trace things <sighs> that's been a that's been a big one for me um just getting reigniting that passion um because i stepped away for 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 so long well now there's no pressure to make money I, from it too that's the thing that's the best part about it and it's tough because you're doing something you love. I think it just depends on the situation. You're doing something you love and you're, and you're, it's a career, you know? Mm-hmm. And for me, I got to a point where I wasn't enjoying it anymore because I felt so stressed over needing the need for it to make money. Oh, I feel that. You know? So it took a lot of the passion away from me and stepping back and taking some time away and now being back into it again. Like I've got that passion again and I'm like, shoot, do I want to start making shirts again? Do I want to relaunch my website? Sold the truck. Okay. Um, think, I mean, it ended up working out though because I sold it and then COVID happened. I wouldn't have been able to do any events or anything oh, anyway. So yeah. like it would have just been sitting. Um, but no, I sold it because I, um, my wedding stuff really started taking off. Mm-hmm. So then it was coming down to, okay, do I want to pay a couple hundred bucks to set the truck up at an event and make some money? Or I can book a wedding and make a couple grand mm-hmm. and it's the weekend. So it's like, I was constantly like, okay, do I want to do this truck event this weekend or do I want to book this wedding? Which one's making me more money? I mean, at the end of the day, it was coming down to putting money in my pocket. So then I started just getting overrun with wedding stuff. And I'm like, well, shit, the truck's just sitting there. I felt like guilty not doing events and it just like rotting away. So I sold it, but I kept doing stuff online and doing trade shows. Mm -hmm. And we had a bunch of plans this year. We were going to do the podcast at shows and I was also going to oh, sell cool. my stuff and do like a mobile thing. Yeah. That all went to shit, obviously. So hopefully you next year. a podcast year, studio in your next t-shirt truck. Dude, we joked about actually doing like a, <laughs> like getting like a Sprinter van yeah. and doing like a mobile podcast yeah. Yeah. truck. I think that'd be super we're cool. We're working on a Sprinter van now. Yeah. Uh, the guy owns a production company. He films uh, like advertisements for different companies. Cool. So we're putting a TV and a sound system and lights and yeah. stuff in it. Yeah. So you do that too. Yeah, See? we're getting more into that. Just because, once again, I know yeah. the people that can do it better than I could. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, let's work together and See? everybody wins. I want to know that. I just yeah. think it's just sewing. But that's that's a big market, man. Yeah. Like yeah. those custom, especially like now, and this might be out of your niche, but like people are doing the like camper vans. Mm-hmm. Is that a, There's is a that company a market in for Cleveland you? that that's all they do. Really? Yeah, Advanced RV. Okay. So, uh, I mean, it's top-notch sprinter vans yeah you know like magazine yeah so it's like just go up there yeah and, yeah I they have like, the process ironed out very well yeah it's so cool that what you think is like you know one thing for this career like it, it bottles so much more too. oh yeah like it oh, expands yeah. and expands and it's like who knows what you'll be working on 10 years from now yeah you know never know it, it's so easy for that to happen but that's also to like so what you were saying earlier about when i asked about getting into like paint and stuff like sometimes you're better off sticking to your niche because yes. to me, I got so overwhelmed right? because I wanted to tap into it. I wanted to be able to offer everything. I could, can I tell you, can I be honest with you? Yeah. I could almost like see that from afar. Yeah. Just cause I've kind of, you know, Absolutely. we don't really know each other well, but yeah, you know, you're buddies with Nick and absolutely. 
So I've kind of seen from afar and I was like, man, he does all the things. Yep. And it, and it got to a point where it's like, how do you manage all this? Right. You know, like I was running myself so thin because it's, and it was, and I think that was the, um, that's just a personality or a trait in me where it's like, one, I will figure something out before I pay someone. Like, I just know I, I'm, I'm handy. Like I have, I have the means I'll figure it out. Like mm-hmm. I would, I feel more rewarded and like, shit, I can do that. I'm just going to do it. So mm-hmm. when people would come to me and say, Hey, do you offer this? Well, if I didn't, now I do. Like right. I'm going to figure it out. So, but to that point, then you spread yourself so thin. Like mm-hmm. if you're strong in your niche and it's doing well, like we've been doing a lot of embroidery recently Yep. Uh, for this other customer that we have. And it was floated out there. Oh, let's look at how much an embroidery machine is. Lots it's a whole other business. Like 15 grand. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. Embroidery machines are expensive, man. Yeah. Like the lower end one was like eight yeah. on sale. Depending how many like heads you want to yeah. get. You want to do what yeah, like a want. 10 needle. Yeah. But I mean, the, the guy that we use, he's been doing it, doing forever. it for 10 years and yep. it's probably paid you know, off. He can do it for good pricing. And, well, then even he had, the you know, the service technician come in and all the settings mm-hmm. were off and, and he's the one that's been doing it for a while. Yep. So it's like, it's a whole no, I'm not, another no. industry. But then that's something like, not for we'll, a $4 embroidery, you know, I was going to say, what well, to be like how logo? many thousands of those do you have to do before you get your money back yeah. too. 10 grand yeah unless you're going to be become a full embroidery shop right but then you're getting gonna be doing hats and t-shirt yeah yeah Yeah. so it's like it's not your no is a powerful word too (laughs) absolutely i'd love to do it all you know wouldn't it be fun but stick it out to knots that's my one advice find your niche and stick to it like if i just did t-shirts and only t-shirts the riches are in the niches (sighs) absolutely man although the camper van thing is something that's on my list uh, someday i'd love to do on my own like i would just like to as a oh, hobby yeah. or like a side project mm-hmm. i'd love to buy like a short bus or and just spend the time freaking mm-hmm. customizing that thing yep. inside i think it'd be so cool to my, do my friend has something like that in uh, colorado she lives with her husband yeah and uh they said and stop living in apartments they were going yep. to uh trick out the school bus and when i first heard of the idea i was like how can you live in a school bus like Bro. you know you think of all the things you need in a house and all that you know plumbing everything they got it yeah. It's oh, yeah. all in there. Oh, yeah. And like it blows my mind seeing videos of this thing over and over again. Like, yep. I can't believe it. They've done it and they've done it at such a cheap price. Full too. size school bus? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Stuff in I mean, dude, they got like couches, chairs, mm-hmm. they yep. got their bed in the bag mm-hmm. and all that. They ripped all the seats out. Yep. It's insane. It is, it is a, and... It's a house. Yeah. There's a guy I follow on YouTube. Is, uh, it's Modern Builds, is what it's called. Okay. Uh, I think his name is Ben. I can't remember his name, but Modern Builds is the channel. Um, and he's doing a bus right now. He's done it in like a couple segments of videos on the show or whatever. And he, it was full length school bus, completely gutted it, put a full bathroom in it, kitchen, yeah. bed, like that'd be super legit to do, man. And, he, and you can, if you do it yourself, it's so it's much less bad. expensive than buying a oh, yeah. $150,000 camper or yeah. whatever those things freaking cost. Um, and you can have all that running water. They put water tanks in those things and solar panels for electric and, Dude, I want to do it so bad. It'd yeah, be so cool. And you could draw from wherever in the country. Just, just freaking take the dogs, yeah. just drive around. That's true. I wonder about that. I don't know if they still drive it or not. I, I Now that I think about it, I don't even know the answer to that. If they drive it or if it's just, just parked, parked there full time. Because she told me they had to, they're renting out this little plot of land. Yeah. It's like, it's like half an acre or something like that. And it's nothing crazy. Yeah. But um, they rent that out and that's their only bills pretty much every month. Yeah. Like, that's a wild yeah. lifestyle to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, how do you even start that? Like, I'm, I, I've been so used to all this, you know, all my life. Yeah. I don't know if I even could. I'd probably do it temporarily. I don't think if I could commit to that for like lifetime. Yeah. But like. A lot of those people that do that, they just will do cross country and then they stop and they pick up side job, like a bartender, mm-hmm. they'll do some landscaping work, make a little bit of money, keep going. You can park and um, like where the semis and stuff all park and That's rest true. and stuff, you know, they've got hookups for electric and bathroom and all that kind of crap. It's a lifestyle. I, guess. I like my routine. I, I couldn't yeah. be a nomad. I know. Yeah nomad. So, that's the word. Yeah. Yes. Oh man. Some days I'm like, some days I dream of just doing that. Or um, fucking just being like a farmer and living off the land. Yeah, My yeah. little brother has a farm and stuff, and he works in the farming industry. He does. He's like a technician. They do installs at big farms and stuff. But um, I'm like, man, like it would be super cool just to have a big farm and just freaking grow our own food and just live mm-hmm. off the land and mm-hmm. just get off the grid. Like yep. we're so in this, 
which I love, which would be so weird for me to not because I am very connected. All the social media yep. platforms and YouTube. You watch The Social Dilemma? I want to. I haven't yet. Ooh. I'm nervous to watch it because I know it's going to be a mind fuck. <laughs> I get more requests for that movie because I'm a critic in my okay. kind of spare time. I get more requests for that movie to review that one than I do any other movie this Did year. You watch Have you it? seen it? No, I haven't. Not yet. Okay. But I, I think I'm going to save it for one of my last like 12 reviews okay. of the year. I think I'm going to get to it. You watched it? Yeah. Yeah. We're all we're all fucked yeah yeah i mean i kind of know that already anyways i watched did you ever watch the greatest hack i don't think so it's kind of like similar time okay from what i'm gathering from the social dilemma very similar it was um it kind of goes around the previous election and how like russia was involved and like oh, okay. how facebook kind of profiles us and mm -hmm. how they use our social media lives against us to um advertise to us or like sway us and things mm -hmm. like that that show that that documentary was wild and how like the posts that will get the most interaction from people butting heads yep. how get, uh it's just floated like the, to the top it's just too. Like the news yeah you know that's like that and it's weird as a as a society that those are the things that fuel our interest mm -hmm. i mean we really think about it like when i was i went out saturday to watch the ufc fight and i was sitting there with my buddy and i'm like like we pay to watch people get their asses beat and like that's interesting to us like it's just so weird because like i could never do that I it's just never, like, real it's, you know modern day gladiator yeah, right that we and the people that are like enthralled are entertained with, <laughs> i am that's the scary part <laughs> the serial killer shows and like the yeah. thing like violence Where everything and is stuff, murder and yeah, yeah that's what like we find it intriguing and that's because it's taboo it's so far off from our path of life yeah that, you know anything different in that taste of escapism for a minute yeah do you think it makes people feel better oh my life isn't that bad to a degree murder yes. and rage and to a degree yes absolutely i think it's that walk on the wild side that's like well i'm safe here sitting in my yeah. chair watching this yeah i'm not there but i can still explore or this. if i would murder people i relate to how that guy murdered yeah. that person mm -hmm. so yeah. that's weird <laughs> we, we, i think we talked about it on on here maybe it was season one or so but like i've always found that interesting how like we are drawn to that you know and mm -hmm. how uh, women especially is weird oh here we they go they love that shit man oh like, the murder porn like the murder like the, yeah yeah dude it's crazy <laughs> they're man. living out of fantasy yeah like the serial killer <laughs> i always tell dina are you morning? gonna murder me tonight just make it quick <laughs> right please, right. please. Uh, wait till i fall asleep and then i just won't wake up i saw up. that look earlier today yeah <laughs> i am not getting married <laughs> right. but no that was like uh one of the first things i did was watch um, that, though. when is i stopped kind of paying attention to the news feed so oh, much yeah. mm -hmm. because it's just a distraction at the end of the day like yep. the you know, i think the important things kind of filter through right you know if it's important it'll stick around in this news cycle long enough to where you'll I, find if out. i need to know about it i'll, I'll find out someone will tell you someone will share yeah. it to you directly i yeah I, I definitely over the last i think since covid especially because people had nothing else to do so there was so much more online mm -hmm filtering people out unfriending unfollowing oh yeah just because there's so much just toxic on there mm -hmm. and there's so much negative i post a lot but i follow like my close group of friends i use it for like the podcast and stuff like that but i try and avoid all that drama shit man like, like jesse feel the, feel the tension oh jesse loves it yeah like, jesse like i'll i'll get sucked into some of those news feeds <laughs> only because jesse will comment so it'll show up at like the top of my feed right because Jesse loves to fuel the fire. Mm -hmm. He's very smart. So, and he's very like, um, I don't know the right word, but he's like intricate in the way he talks about stuff. Okay. So he just goes in there and just destroys he's a people. Wordsmith. He is a wordsmith. It's like talking with a lawyer basically. Yeah. And like, there's no way you're going to win this argument. Some people no. were just, they're meant for it, yeah. you know? Well, he writes for, I mean, Chris and him both, but he, he writes oh, yeah, I was, um, for Sports Illustrated. So, I mean, he's just good with words. He's a teacher. But, um, so I avoid that stuff, but I'll like dial in and I'll just read his comments and yeah. stuff of him just like tearing people up. I stopped it's at hilarious. Instagram. I don't know Snapchat, Twitter, yeah, TikTok. It's like no Facebook and then Instagram. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I need to. I should probably scale back because I have I have a mall. Freaking TikTok, yeah. Snapchat, Instagram. Like how many social medias do you need? Right. You know, like but you get sucked in, and the sad part is, is most of it's the same thing on all of them. People just post mm -hmm. the same video to right. five different sites, but. Go learn something. I know. Well, it's a lot, a lot of the ones I follow, though, it is. Like, my um, TikTok is interesting, and people always are like, it's for kids. But the one thing I enjoy about that is 
um, the algorithm that they've created, I mean, it really shows the things that you find interesting. So mm-hmm. like it starts to realize social dilemma might even talk about this is like the things that you've, you like or like comment on and, and it like builds an algorithm. I think for we you. all like uh, subconsciously know that too. So oh, yeah. oh, I like this. We'll see more of that. Yep. And-, and it, and it, so like if I get on TikTok, I mean, I'm scrolling through it's, for the majority, it's like build stuff, like watching yeah. stuff like what you do. I watch people building. You got to go actually build something. I know. Oh, shit. You know I'm doing that. <laughs> it's freaking, I spend too much time building. Um, What's your favorite thing to build? Um, everything, man. Yeah. I've yeah. been real big into woodworking stuff. Where's like, all your tools? Where's your tools? Garage, man. Yeah. Filled. I, uh, when we moved, so we moved into this house about a year and a half ago. I had some tools, but when we moved here, I like was forced to really invest because I you know, did a full remodel mm-hmm. basically. So, I mean, I bought everything, table saws and chop saw, yeah. routers, all that stuff. And I love it, man. Mm-hmm. Like building that deck, building all this stuff. I'm doing like those, sh- I'm, there's more shelves that are going there. Okay. And those are all acrylic underneath. So they're going to be lit up on oh, nice. the bottom. So the shoes are all lit up. But uh, you do need to come work with us. Dude, it'd be just fun just to come hang out. Yeah. I love doing like, I love just tinkering with stuff. Mm-hmm. Anything I can just build with my hands, you know, just using your hands. Uh, it's that's that creative part, and it's just like using your mind. I don't know. I don't think I'll you have to ever... take a kernel out of your head and then see it. Yeah, three D is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I wanted to go to school for art. Actually, I wanted to be an art teacher. Um, I went to Myers at Akron, but uh, I dropped out because I couldn't. Um, the passion, not the passion. I enjoy, I loved art. The issue with the schooling, and I think that college isn't for everyone and a trade route might've been better for me, but it was an art school and they would say, all right, here, do this image drawer. Like you need, this is your end process. I need you to outline steps A through Z, break it down how you got there. And that's not how my mind works. I can look at that and I can create that. Mm-hmm. Just, it's just how I function. You could, you have to see it. Before I just can, I can just see that if they're like, draw that shoe I can get you to that end point right from the start where they would want you to say, okay, well draw your little silhouette of it and then mm-hmm. do your new detailed outline. And then it, like, and some people might have to do that cause they're learning art, but it was required and I couldn't do it. And oh, I was like, painful. fuck this. Like yeah. I'm not going to go through and like fake all. And I, I just dropped out. I was like, I can't do this. This is like so bogus. Like if I can create that product yeah. on my you own, don't need the school for it. then why am I going to pay you all the money to right. do this? You know, and it sucks because, I mean, obviously, I can't be a teacher without the degree. But at the same point, I was like, I, like my mind. Sure you could. You could put on your own class anywhere you I want. Do. I thought about it. Do it. At one point, I did. I thought about being uh, doing, like, online classes or opening up, like, a yeah. small study, like a private study or something. You know how many people want to learn how to draw that shoe? Yeah. You know? I enjoy that stuff, man. And that's, like, a passion of mine is showing others. Do you follow any of the people that make like custom jewelry? Dude, yes. It's awesome. Uh, the shoe surgeon, I think. So yes. Like Dude, he's yes. incredible, man. Yeah. That's something. There's a guy yes. in Cleveland that does it. Yes. You, it's, he, you do upholstery. But you once can do again, shoes, it's a man. whole other It's a whole other thing. You could thing. do it. I know. You make some big money. Well, that's, that's our next side I would project. want to do it just to like make them take the leather out of an interior and like make the shoe from the same leather. Um, so but I don't uh, want to really sell them. Don't try and steal our idea because yeah. uh, me and Sean are going to be doing this. So. Oh, go ahead and try. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> patent that shit. Yeah. We, need, we need to do that. We're not the first ones to do anything. Hell no, but man, that would be legit. You mm-hmm. might not be the first, but you can be the best. Because I have ideas for that, but I don't have the skill to do, like to sew a shoe. But yeah, that dude, God, mm-hmm. man, he did some Freddy Krueger shoes. Oh, yeah. Wow. Those are so Dude, dope, yeah. man. He used like the sweater material for like the mm-hmm. soles and everything. And that's a whole nother niche. Whole I think you market. need a different, a couple different machines than I have too. So yeah. Yeah. There's a guy in Cleveland that does it. I can't remember his name. They put on um, workshops, I think though. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's and I've thought cool. about doing, you know, here's how to install your own seat cover. Yeah. Cause it's not hard, dude. You just you need can, to know the right steps to do it well. If you do that stuff, right? that's where you can build a following on your YouTube. So like yeah. on our YouTube, I have different um, channels, I guess you call it. So mm-hmm. like, one is just our show episodes and then one is like behind the scenes stuff. And then one is like, um, we have a Twitch so you can watch just whatever you want. But if you created YouTube and one of the sections like DIY stuff, Oh yeah. That builds your following. There's a lot of guys that do what I do that do that stuff. Yeah. And but there's always, Oh yeah. There's tons there's of people real. that do what I do. Right. I posted a YouTube video on my vlog channel of how to do the brakes on my Jeep. 
Oh, and yeah. get a ton of views and yeah. comments because it's just where you fall in the search algorithm. Mm -hmm. Well, you can build a following because people always want to know DIY stuff. Right. You know, I thought about doing Jesse. So he does um, hub pages. He's been trying to get Chris to do it. Chris is like, I'm not doing it. What's a hub page? Hub pages is, um, so it's like a writer's forum. Okay. So Jesse posts sports articles on there and then they just get shared. So like if you search for like Jordan versus LeBron. So like a Reddit? Kind of, but it's like legit. Like you just sign up. It's kind of, I would equivalent, I would equivalent it to like a YouTube, but just for like writing. Okay. You know? So that's how Jesse got started doing all of his sports stuff. And then he got picked up by Sports Illustrated through hub pages. But he used it so for he's not sports. Wild, you just start, just got to start. But he, he, he keeps telling me, he's like, do, because I I um, film or like photo all of my DIY stuff. Like I always take progress mm -hmm. pictures. He's like, dude, let's start your hub pages for a DIY projects and you can make money. He's making a couple hundred bucks a month off of it. Just from oh, so clicks. Like a subscriber? You get from it from clicks, clicks and okay. then you can do like ad stuff on there. Mm -hmm. So he has like affiliate links for Amazon. So he might share an Amazon link for something. And if they buy that, he gets so much money. But even if they click that link and buy something different, he still makes money off of it. Okay. So you get like link shares and stuff like that. Um, but DIY stuff, even like that. So you do your YouTube and then you link your hub page to the YouTube. I can't remember what he called right. it. That like where you integrated them all together. So everything like revolves around. Yeah. But like, it's kind of like having the Instagram and the Facebook, like you mm -hmm. post a little bit on Instagram and then say, watch the full video on my YouTube or whatever. And okay. it all like reflects and cycles yes. through each other. But that DIY stuff, man, you, you just got to You got to get someone to, uh, you need like a, you need like a, a college social media intern, person. Yeah. You man. know, to come film. I've got a buddy that does it for restaurants. Okay. Um, I wonder if he would. We got a video guy, Paul, that we work with. Yeah. But uh, he has his own business too. And, yeah. You know, it's just hard to so do my, it all my, the time. My buddy Evan does it, and that's just what he does. He's like a social okay. media content creator. Yeah. Well, he's a chef, an amazing chef. So that's why he kind of focuses on restaurants. Right. But um, I also don't know if we're in a position yet to pay yes, for someone absolutely. full time quite yet. So yeah, but you can get people. I think like you, like someone starting out. Someone that's yeah. looking just for some side work to like right. kind of figure it out. Like that's something I wish I had more time for. And I still want to do one. I talked to you about it probably been two years now yeah. about doing a vlog Hell, I episode. I still owe you a bike seat for designing hey. this logo. You still have a motorcycle? I, I do. We're getting the seat before <laughs> I leave here. Then. I enjoy That's the thing though. That's, I enjoy doing that stuff and I right. like helping people out. I'm like, whatever. I don't. Regardless, I do want to do a video though. Um, I want to come out and do a video of like a project of yours and yeah put a vlog episode together and stuff like that. So, but very That's what's cool. hard too is some of these projects, they take forever, you know, months yep. to complete. So it's, that's crazy, you know, to be consistent with it is just the key. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Consistency is a big one, you know, and even if it's just a little bit each day, mm -hmm. but you have to get, and I, I've even told Nick this with his stuff because he follows a lot of landscape pages of these and they, they just create beautiful content. And I've tried talking to him several times about let's go to Best Buy. I'll get you set up with like a decently inexpensive setup for a camera and tripod and mic and that mm -hmm. kind of thing um, to kind of build his Instagram page to, to get to the, cause he does so much work. Yeah. He doesn't document any of it. The phones are so good. You don't even need all yeah. that. You know, you don't, but like he breaks every iPhone he ever has. Okay. So <laughs> they don't work. So here's an, he's got mulch and, camera. Yeah. He's got mulch and dirt all in the screen cover and stuff. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. But like I told him, like, let's set it up just for this. Keep it in your truck. Every job that you do, mm -hmm. take some pictures, a couple of videos, yeah. like good quality. Then the stress of the day gets in there That's and the you're thing. like, man, I don't want to, you know, it's so hard to document it. It's yeah. really like, That's I'm, why time lapse are kind of just easy. Yeah. It's set just your phone set up. It up. Yeah. Plug work. and play. Well, because if a new customer comes to you and they say, why should we pick you? You need to have visual proof as to why you're the best, why mm -hmm. you're the one that should be chosen. Yep. And I mean, you obviously take pictures of your stuff. I mean, your yeah. page is filled with all. You still do work. more. But yeah, it's hard finding that balance though. You know, like when you're focused on, all right, I got to get this project done. You're not right. thinking about, I got a yeah. video of this wall. I'm trying to do it as well. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a good niche. Uh, it's a definitely an, a market for, like, I'd love to do that, but it's hard. You got to get the clientele, yeah. people want to pay for it you know, being a social media content creator for people, but it's a big market, big, big market. Um, any other questions on this oh, no. topic? Covered everything. I think we covered a lot. Um, 
we're going to link all of your stuff, Spotlight Customs. If you need or are interested in anything that we've just talked about. I'm not here about, for that. I just want to. I know, but still, like, it's cool. Like, check out um, Sean's page. At the very least, the pictures, the, the stuff's incredible. So, um, very cool story, though. I mean, I really do. I, I think it's, it's inspiring just to see that path. You know, mm-hmm. and I love seeing that. Pe- I love people getting to the point where they're really doing what they love. Um, it's something that doesn't happen as often as it should. You know, we need people willing to support small businesses and tradesmen and stuff like that. So, um, I'd love to. I keep. I'm trying to get my little brother to come to you for his. Uh, he's got a. Um, I think it's a 1942 Willys. Oh, cool! Dude, it's Jeez. legit. It's yeah. dope. Um, Does and he, he live around here. He lives, yeah, uh, Roots Townish area. He's okay. got the farm. Yeah. He does, um, he's got a military history museum, basically, like in his basement. It's insane. Uh, dude's got um, a uniform from every war, like head to toe. Boots, flak jackets, the knives, the guns, everything that goes with it. And he's got an um, a Army Willys Jeep that needs a new, uh, the bench needs redone. Okay. I'm like, dude, I, I know the guy, right. like, let's just set you up. We go to him <laughs> have him look at it and tell you what it would cost. The thing's cool. It drives. It's a I'll three meet you on out the there tree. One day. That'd be cool to see all that stuff. Dude, he's got some insane stuff. Yeah. Uh, he was, he, that'd be a neat brother. uh, vlog video for you. Yeah, he does. Uh, he actually has a YouTube channel and okay. he does. Um, so he's got a page on Facebook. It's, uh, I think it's called like military history and consultants or something. For a while, he wanted to do like the bus thing we were talking about, like living in, but he was going to do like a mobile museum. But um, he has a YouTube channel and he does like ration videos. Like he tastes, he'll do like rations from all over the world, <laughs> like Russia and China. And he like cooks them just using what comes with them. So mm-hmm. if it comes with a little cook stove, that's what he uses. If it doesn't, he doesn't. It's all um, period, era proper i don't know what the right word is for it but so he'll film him trying so he's eating like mres from yep 40s Dude, it's a nasty oh. like just like they're 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 um not expired there's like concrete turds coming out Dude. The next day. well some those, of the stuff is those things have a long shelf life too. yeah like mres like they're some of the they're not f- typical food some of the food that comes in them though is i've done a couple of them with them like i filmed them and had the food i don't know how he does it but he'll do that and then he'll also do um videos of him showing like the the gear and going over all the, it's it's pretty cool that is neat it's a um it's an interesting niche too it's got a pretty good following there's like a probably three or four guys that do it um and uh yeah it's it's actually pretty cool to watch so it's just history that is a huge following dude and he knows he knows so much too it blows my mind like he just because i watch him film it it's not scripted he doesn't have like a book he's reading off of i'll be there filming it and he's literally just going through the stuff knows exactly what it's called what country it's from what it was used for he knows the war dates and the general i'm like dude how do you like, he just picked it up over he time knows he's been into this since dude is i mean as long as i can remember since he was a kid like he started collecting the stuff as a young kid and um that book over there one of those books actually i just picked up from another like war book like he just he reads it he knows about it he's well it's like anything right find something that you, you love like to do yeah dive exactly. deep as deep as you can. Yep. And then sometimes you can. Yeah. It's impressive though. It's like out of it. Chris with movies or Jesse with sports. Like we'll talk about yeah. sports on here. They're fucking like, Oh yeah. Back in 1948 and this player and they know him by name and the day mm-hmm. and the freaking, I'm like, what, who is that? And what the fuck are you talking about? I, I just don't have that. <laughs> like I can build stuff. I can use my hands, but I do not mm-hmm. have that recall ability of like knowledge that people have. It's crazy to me. Um, but yeah, so very cool to see what you're doing. Um, appreciate you coming on. We're going to get into a couple more segments. So we'll talk about, um, let's hit, let's get social really quick. That's a short segment. Big one's going to be Hollywood report. So, cause Jesse isn't here. We won't do a big locker room talk or anything. Uh, let's get social. It is July 20th, 1969. And man is about to land on the moon. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward, and freedom will be defended. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. That's the way the news goes. Let's get social. Fitting with uh, Mr. Bill Clinton being on there. All we really got to talk about this week quickly is um, 
So the first, it's the first debate of the year, I think. Yeah. So the first debate, is it just Biden and Trump? Yeah. Okay. That's all I know there's is. like other people, but there they're is. not a part of it. They're never a part of it though. Okay. That's all it is, is Republican and Democrat. So um, the first debate, presidential debate of this, the year, the season, whatever is um, Tuesday. So today when you're listening to this, uh, it's in Cleveland, I think. Yep. So um, if you want to find out uh, policies, where stances are, I don't know how much we're going to get out of the first one. It's probably gonna be a lot of bickering and bantering. Yeah. But it's cool that it's in Cleveland. Um, so I definitely recommend checking that out. You know, we talk about on here, you know, making sure you exercise your vote. It's important to vote if you want to see change. Otherwise, don't complain. Um, so listen, give it a give it a check out. Um, Jesse actually shared a pretty cool link with me. Because I'll be the first to admit, like I'm not very versed in politics. Like I try and stay up to date, but there's so much going on all the time. And um it's hard. I will be watching the debate though, because I would like to kind of see where these guys um, go with things. But anyhow, Jesse shared a link with me yesterday because we were kind of going back and forth about Trump and Biden and um, where we stand and stuff. It's called isidewith.com, I think. Mm -hmm. Let me find it real quick. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. So isidewith.com. I recommend if, if you're planning on voting or you've got questions about where they stand, um, you want to know policies. Um, if you go on there, you there's a there's a tab that says quiz, and you go through. I'd estimate it's probably a hundred ish questions, and it's like, what are your what are your beliefs on abortion? Are you pro life or are you pro choice? And then you'll select yes or no, like pro life, pro choice, or you click other, and then it breaks it down into more detail. Like I'm pro life, but. I think that it should be after a certain time frame or before. Certain. So anyways, so you go through and you answer them all. And then at the very end, you'll, you submit your survey, tallies all of your questions and answers up. And then it creates for you um, a party sheet. So it'll say, based on your answers, you're 86% Republican or 30% Democrat or you're green or one of mine was uh I, was, I, I, saw, my, I saw peace and love on there. And my, I've never heard that one. Yeah, before. I was like in the and peace I, and love party. And, and I'm a huge independent voter. So yeah. like I know all those smaller yeah. parties. But yeah, there's like libertarian. There's, Mine came up. So, okay. And I don't know a lot of these, but I came up 81% transhumanist. Yeah. 79% Democrat. 78% peace and freedom. 77% green. 75% socialist. 56 libertarian, 51 constitution, and 48 Republican. So how helpful is this really? Then? So the, the thing that was helpful to me about it was if, because realistically we know we're voting, if you're voting, you're voting Trump or Biden. There's Jojo Gorgensen or Harry Bow, Howie, Howie, whatever that I got, <laughs> you know, on my ballot. There's a smaller people. But if you're voting, you're voting Biden or Trump. Kanye. Kanye. <laughs> is he still running? No. I heard he's in three states. Yeah. Okay. Like supposedly he's still on the ballot in three states. I know South Carolina is one of them. So the only thing that the thing I found helpful about it was, and the thing we were talking about in our group chat yesterday was, um, there's always going to be this debate of Trump versus Biden. There's going to be, well, Trump's bad because this is and this. Look, he's, he's got a potty mouth. The dude needs to shut up. Like we know his issues, what things has he done that are positive that, you know, there's good and bad in everybody that goes for Biden as well. So my struggle was so many people are pushing, well, I'm going to vote Biden just because I don't like Trump. And I said, well, I will only ever vote based on policy. I'm going to vote on like what they stand for because that's what we're voting on the rights that they're going to take away from us or that they're going to alter. They're going to change. So I want to know what do they stand for? So by doing that, I stand with whatever it was called after you answer it, it tells you who you most align with. So it'll say you align with Biden at 80% and you align with Trump at 40%. So if you're really torn on where you want to go, this would say, well, you align 80% of the way with Biden, only 40 with Trump. So if you're going to vote, you should vote Biden because that's who you most align with in your belief system. Howie Hawkins. Howie Hawkins was the guy I got as like my most who I should align. I don't know who the hell that is. But I found it interesting just to be able to see the policies that they are in charge of. You can vote or you can kind of say if it's more important to you, less important to you. And it just tallies everything up. And then there's a compare answers. So you can go through each question and see what each candidate said. So if you just, I think that 
a big issue with voting is people don't vote educated. There's vote blue or what was the one saying? Vote blue or go blue or don't vote. I don't know. But basically it's blue no matter what. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. Just vote them because they're a part of that party. Right. You know, and I think that's dangerous because you don't know what you're voting for. Yeah, you I know? agree. So I think it's really important to just do it educated if you're going to vote. Um, so that was just a useful site for me to kind of see the policies that are out there to see where our Trump stands versus where a Biden stands on things that are important to me, gun laws and women rights and gay rights, things like that. Um, so it was, it was kind of eye opening in that aspect. Cause we don't see that, you know, the news pushes their agendas and what they want us to see. And this kind of allows you to see a different stance based on what you say blindly. Cause when you're answering the quiz, it doesn't tell you their stances or anything until the very end, yeah. you know? So you're just answering as long as you're true to yourself, you're answering your true belief system, and then it'll align you appropriately. And to piggyback on what you said, what's cool about the site is, so as opposed to like <clears throat> these hundreds of issues that you'd have to go to hundreds of different sites to find these on, yep. you've got it all on this one website that's, yeah. you know, here in one shot. Now it might be a hundred questions, but there are, there's a lot of policies for every candidate. Yep. So to have it all in one page is kind of convenient too. Um, that's why I think this page, it is important, um, especially if you're one of those who is on the wall, you know, you don't know who you're voting for or if you're going to vote at all. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, I'm, I'm glad that Ryan checked it out though, because it is, it's one of those pages and it doesn't seem geared toward any one particular candidate because otherwise he'd probably get Biden or Trump, right. you know, 99.9% .9 of the time. Right. And like it's categorized. So like when you go to the quiz, there's different segments. So like you're, you're answering questions on environmental stuff or foreign policy or human rights or whatever. And to Chris's point of it not being like in favor of one or the other, I didn't realize there was so many questions. So when you first do it, I think it has you answer like a couple from each category. So the first time I did it, I had answered 21% of the questions and I got my percentages. And then literally as you do more and more questions, you actually can see everything adjusting and as I answered certain questions, Trump would be high, higher than Biden. And as I finished another category, it would adjust. So it does really align with basically where their stances are. Um, so just a, a good tool for people. If you're, if you're, if you're wanting to know the policies, um, if you're unsure who to vote for, uh, look, it's just my opinion, but don't vote by party. Is it just for presidential? You, it actually has, um, you can get into local stuff too. Okay. So you can break, because that's another thing we've talked about where yeah. like all the focus is always on the presidency, but where we can really enact change locally is getting more involved in our state elections and local yeah. elections. And I think that's very important. Um, but as far as the upcoming one, uh, I, I don't think voting based on party is the way that you should go. I think you need to vote based on where they stand because if you're voting, if you, if you're just voting Biden because you don't like Trump, and Biden is, you know, anti-abortion, and that's something that's really important to you, and you have an opposite view of him. Well, now you just voted someone in who is going to completely change, you know, and that might affect you. You know, for the most part, uh, middle class, everyday citizens, like we're not overly super affected by the presidential um, election. So I think a lot of people just vote, you know, and they don't really pay much attention to it. Whereas the local one is really important, but good source. I've always, I would check it out. I've always said when you're voting, so like this is the careful stance I take when I vote is that I'm tying my name to a candidate for four years. Right. So like anything that happens, I mean, you have to think worst case scenario. Yep. So like this could be Armageddon possibly in the eyes of this candidate yep. and I'm to blame for that. Yep. That's the way I always look at it. So you have to look at more than just, well, does he have a D or an R in front of his name? Yep. You have to look at the whole picture. And sometimes that picture doesn't materialize. In my case, I'll, I'll go ahead and say a lot of people are going to be pissed at me. I might not vote this yep. year. This might be the first year where I'm like, I, it's not looking good for me. It's yeah. kind of where I was falling too. It's I'm, I'm over here. Yep. There's so many extremes on either side and I'm over here in the middle. It's, without, this, is, uh, this is a tough year. Yeah. A it, clear. It's a really tough year because there's so many things about Trump that I don't like. And it comes down, it's hard because with Trump, it comes down to a moral issue with me, more so than a presidential issue. Um, is there things that he's done good as president? Yes, I absolutely believe that he, he has done good. He's taken the war to a big pharma probably more than any other president in recent memory yeah. has. So I, I, I do. I give him yeah, credit. There's, uh, that, you know, his stances on pedophilia is, is uh, incredible, too. Yeah. Because most presidents wouldn't even have the time of day for something like that. Yep. 
So I give him credit. Yeah, there's things he's done well, but then then I struggle with the moral things, you know, the, the racial things that he he says or yeah. the things that he says out against women and stuff. Like he's got like the dude shut his mouth up. So then I I where I struggle and where I'm with Chris is do I vote because I really believe that you should vote and I think you should you should um take advantage of your right to vote. But then do I vote Biden? Because if I vote Trump now, I feel like my friends that are in a minority group or that are women, that I am supporting a racist. So now am I slapping, is that a slap in the face to them? Because I don't support those thoughts. So that forces me to vote Biden. But now I vote Biden. He, he's against or he's for or against things that I don't believe in policy wise. So now what do I do? You know, and that's a really tough position to be in because am I going to vote the guy who I know is going to support things that I don't agree with politically, or do I vote for the guy who's supporting things I agree with politically, but morally is wrong to me. And then that's like, that's a tough place to be in. And this year, like, it's not a good candidate. I'm not thrilled about Biden being president. Yeah. I'm not thrilled about Trump being reelected again, but. Well, it's a slippery slope when your own vice president calls you a racist. So like, I mean, you know, so I'm saying there is no clear, answer <laughs> it is it's a it's going to be a very tough year i think that and the scary part about it is i think a lot of people are going to vote that way and yeah. people are going to just vote biden because they don't agree with trump more morally and i understand that but i really hope people look at what he stands for as he's going to be your president for the next four years and what does that mean what does he support that you agree with or don't agree with and the justification no matter what biden does the justification is always going to be well at least it's not Trump, right? Like, yeah, well, exactly. Biden bombed a country today and killed 15 million children and all that. Well, yeah. at least it's not Trump. Exactly. That's a dangerous way of thinking, man. I, I, I agree with Ryan on that point. It's that you have to study everything. And like I said, you have to attach your name to a candidate. And if you're not ready to do that, no harm, no foul in my eyes anyway. Yeah. Like these people will have you over a knife for not voting. But <laughs> like for me, I'm like, look, if you don't feel comfortable voting, don't Oh, yeah. man, like it, it, it's it's your name on the line. I yeah, I think we talked about it. Um, it might have been end of season two about would we rather people vote um, uneducated or not vote at all? Yeah, that was season two. And uh, really, this year, I think I would rather you, if you really don't align with either of them, I'd say don't vote or or vote and you know vote for whatever that guy's name is that I like. Howie Hawkins. How, yeah, I mean, there's other people out there. Um, I don't want to beat a dead horse but check the site if you're interested there it is educational um if you if you want to see again i don't know how well the debate's going to go it's probably just going to be a shit show of them it like, will be it's be like freaking celebrity death match but you'll you'll learn nothing about either candidate by the end of this two hours i would say at the very yeah. least turn it on for some entertainment it's yeah. probably <laughs> i'm going to turn it on and see how it goes um the other big thing going around it's going to get us down a whole nother rabbit hole is trump's tax stuff for me i don't really care I don't know um, anything about it, so. Yeah, he, the, people have been pushing for his tax returns to be released for a really long time. They oh, finally man, did man. it. It came out that he paid like 750 bucks in taxes in 2016, like the first year he got elected. Um, and it's not the best stance, but my thing is like, I don't care what he did in his personal life. I care what he does as president, and that's going to go for Biden as well if he wins. Um, look, if he didn't do anything illegal, can't hold him accountable. Right now, I don't think that there's anything to bring him up on charges. He found loopholes to get away with paying taxes on money he earned on a large income, obviously. The man's wealth, uh, very wealthy. But to me, I look at it as it's no different than like Jeff Bezos with Amazon. He's finding legal loopholes to get around the tax bracket than whatever. I don't, Apple doesn't pay a whole lot yeah, of tax. I mean, you know? I get it. Like, I get morally, that's, and that's where I said earlier, like morally is where I have issues with Trump more than anything. So I get like trust issues and transparency and things like that. Um, it being an issue in that route, but you become president and someone that wealthy, right? By being a, uh, I don't know. I think I don't want to say the only way to get wealthy is to be immoral, but be a straight uh, shooter, you know? Yeah. yeah. I didn't say that. Like, I mean, people, a lot of people that are wealthy is because they they are good with money. They find the ways around mm -hmm. it, you know. And it, and again, unless they bring him up on charges where he broke tax laws, you also have to look at the people that were in office that allowed these tax loopholes. You know, if there's people that Oh, that are allowing these things to happen. Like everyone's up in arms over Amazon, but they're getting incentives. They're getting things that they're being allotted the ability to do it. 
So, I mean, who do you hold accountable? It has to go both ways. I, if people find that which easy, goes like, back it's to Trump. voting. It's those people, you exactly. know, in Excellent. the Senate and Congress, right? That, oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's where a lot of the, the damage takes place in the first place. Mm -hmm. I, I think if he's going to play the card in terms of like, well, you know, these loopholes were here to begin with and I wasn't the first person that took advantage of it, yeah. then stop fighting it at the very least. Then stop going Admit out it. and say like, New York Times a lie. It's fake news. It's all the shit. It's like, right. dude, they got you. I mean, right. like, come on. I feel on. like he owns everything else. What's, you know, what, what's right. the big deal? That's what I say. He does. Know, he, for him. he does. He does hold himself account. Like, I don't know. Here, here's what I'd say. You're not going to face any jail time. Everybody knows this over this whole oh, thing. Yeah. Okay, so let's just stop beating that dead horse. What I do, I come out and I'd say, look, I'm not the first one that did this. I right. won't be the last. You know, I exploited it. And if you want that to be done, fix the loophole. Right. Fix the law. That's the only way. Fix okay, let's move law. on to foreign policy. <laughs> right. Like, that's, you it's going to come up. I'm sure it'll come up in debate. I'm curious to see what he says about it. Yeah. I would imagine it's going to come up tomorrow, yeah. or tonight, whatever. Um. Yeah, that's really all that we have for for Let's Get Soul. So there's not not much going on in the COVID world. Um, we usually try and do a little bit of COVID updates and stuff. It's kind of our thing. It's, it is our it's kind of our thing. <laughs> Things seem actually, to be getting back to a, somewhat, somewhat normal. Somewhat, yeah, I'm supposed to be going to Florida, um, end of October, and I was on like their travel site to see you know what my restrictions were going to be and stuff there. They don't have like they've like for the most part gone back to like pretty normal there. Yeah, they're they're still like getting. There's no pandemic in the south, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. She <laughs> knows where to go. They're still like looking at their numbers, like they're very lower compared to where they were two months ago. I mean, yeah. you're still getting about two thousand cases a day there, you know, yeah, every day. But Florida's such a huge state, too, right. man. Yeah, um, they have all the tourists and stuff that come there. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to NC two weeks from Wednesday, so yeah, North Carolina. Yeah, I'm not. My parents are a little older, so we've kind of had to be pretty careful with things Absolutely. too yeah see. so it's it's weird i've kind of seen it from both perspectives because oh, yeah. you know running the business too it's like well do i just shut it down or do i go to work you know, right. i didn't know what to do for a couple of weeks yeah i'm with you on that i mean like this will be the first like real thing i've done since covid like mm -hmm. i've had several vacations that i've canceled because i'm like to your point like my i've my parents are older they have their own health issues when this first all kicked off i didn't see my mom or dad for couple months you know like we our normal like get togethers and stuff we put on hold because it was like i'm not gonna risk it mm -hmm. um but being this far into the year i kind of i'm to the point where like i think it'll be all right mm -hmm. um you know you still got to do the mask thing or whatever but be, be, be cautious yeah. yeah be cautious i gotta i gotta do something i gotta get out i need <laughs> to travel i can't <laughs> like i'm usually like a five or six vacations a year or either small trips or whatever and I've, i went to universal for pod expo I was like, yeah, and that was in February or very beginning of March. I'm like, I need out. Yeah. So mental health is a very underrated, um, yeah, exploit during this whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. But I don't. As far as COVID overall, I think things are starting to slowly steady their way their way out. They're staying till like next March to June ish. We're yeah. gonna still have repercussions of this, but I don't know. I think November fourth, maybe we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as, you know, when the vaccine's coming, like right now they're saying anywhere between, you know, it could be November right? to January. Yeah, yeah. Is, is looking like it. So, and even when that happens, you're still not going to get a majority of the world that's going to take. Who's going to dive into a vaccine that went through that mm -hmm. six month process rather than a two to three year process. So yes, it will be here for a while for sure, which is wild. And I didn't ask you that at the beginning. Did, did you guys feel much effect? from it on your i mean now you said a little that, bit we said had a, a couple bit. months worth of work backlog so it took a little while for it to catch up but yeah. it did and we had you know maybe a slow month or two did but, it affect you like vendor wise and stuff like that like getting materials um, and things the, the tanneries in italy did shut down for a little while oh, tanneries in italy but uh, luckily we kind of had what we needed so you got material from italy some leathers that's yeah. legit yeah shoot that's some uh doing a ferrari dash at some materials oh, coming over from the UK in a couple of days. That's here, super so. cool. Shit. Um, yeah, I was curious about that. I meant to ask you that at the beginning because for honestly, like contractors and stuff, I know wood has like doubled say, in price. Like doing my deck, like mm -hmm. I bought that material the very end of May. So I started that deck in June and I'm like just now about finished. Yeah. Cause I yeah. could, there was a period of time I couldn't move forward for about a month because there was mm -hmm. no wood between the fires, hurricanes, and yeah. People being home to do the project. Everyone was doing uh, stay-at-home projects or DIYs and stuff. Yeah, it was wild. I didn't know, like, in that market, though, how much of that would affect you guys. Not a whole lot. Everything that's, seems to be kind of... That's good. Yeah. Some markets were hit. Some 
flourished from it, you mm-hmm. know, kind of affects everybody differently. So I was essential. Yeah, me too. I was essential as well. <laughs> and didn't that, get shit for it. I was going to say, I need, I need that hazard pay. Where's yeah. my essential employee bonus? Risked my life day after day. Dude, that is wild though. Like I didn't, I haven't missed a day at work. Mm-hmm. You know, there's people obviously that were out of work because of it or people that went to, to work at home or I mean, my year has been, I went to work every single day and there was no time off or anything like that. Um, yeah, same here. It's been like a, like a different experience yeah so, well yeah i mean like okay here we go back right to work, you know it's, it's interesting to see like how different you know people's lives this year have been because of it just all across the board I mean, the food industry the worst i mean they're getting killed because yeah. of it um that's tough as we said the theaters you know yeah. so many times like they're getting hit hard too yeah we yeah. went to one of those um where you ran out the whole theater did you oh nice yeah. where'd you do that at uh, Tinsel Town. Oh, cool. We saw Ghostbusters. Yes. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. Was it? Yeah. How, how many people? There was maybe 20 of us, 20? 15. Yeah. And that's not bad when you consider, what's it like a hundred bucks or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. That's super so cool. $5. Yeah. A person. Yeah. I had talked about wanting to do it. I thought it'd be awesome yeah. just to have a theater to yourself. Yeah. Friends of ours did it and let us tag along. Hell so. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, dude. That'd be so fun. They're still doing it. Like, we, we might need to just do it. Let's go. Five of us. Who cares? I'll pay 20 yeah. bucks. I will too. That's like, a normal movie ticket. What I was going to say. Nice comfy chairs, stretch yeah. out. Dude, the whole theater. You can yeah. do whatever you want. Just run around in yeah. there. Yeah. Do a podcast. Talk as loud as... Yeah. We could. Theater. That would be... That's a great yes. idea. But they would let us. Yes. That would be awesome. Yeah. Probably issues there with the copyright stuff, but it would be super cool. <laughs> Fuck them. But, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. Just lo- what's what's that, you're talking what's over the audio? What's you got there? Oh, <laughs> snacks and food. Don't worry Fucking about it. with a trench coat. Right. <laughs> I'm not the first guy that snuck Twix in here. Okay, come on. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's been interesting just this, looking back on this year, I think it's going to be something that, I think it's going to be a history book thing. Oh God. Uh, this year will definitely be talked about. As far as it, COVID, the racial, you know, divide and the, the protests and all that sort of thing, like, it's definitely a... Um, just a powder keg for all of it. to everything, man. Yeah. Like, go ahead and remember five things that happened in 2014. Right. And then, you know, remember five things that happened this year. 2020, man. Shit. What a year. Just five? <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's why it's like just get through the end of the year and then yeah, we'll think about doing yeah, you know, whatever extra stuff. You so. got Kobe, George Floyd, Ahmaud Aubrey, COVID, the wildfires, dueling hurricanes, Breonna Taylor, the election. I mean, this year has just been a fucking shit show. Um I'm ready. I know a new year is just yeah. literally just another day, but I'm ready for a new <laughs> year. Like God. Mm-hmm. Um, well, speaking of movie theater parties and stuff, you want to do a uh, Hollywood report? Yeah, I'm ready. Cool. My God. Okay. It's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay, What's the procedure? stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Take what you got down. Do Steve assemble. Hollywood report. What do you got going on in uh, movie world, Christopher? So kind of a short uh, segment this week, but I got two things. Uh, first of all, I was sent a, a screener from Amazon of this upcoming show called Utopia, starring John Cusack. Okay. Uh, it's a remake on a Channel 4 series of the same name. Uh, basically, it's a, you can't say post-apocalyptic, but apocalyptic apocalyptic show. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, it takes place uh, around... It's written by Dennis Kelly. The original version was a brightly colored mixture of conspiracy theories and comic book violence. Um, So basically, there's a big controversy going on with this show right now because timing is kind of playing into why it's getting word of mouth so much because a lot of the things going on in the show are very reflective of our own world. And right now, Amazon's facing a big backlash because a lot of the things in the show are creating bad ideas for conspiracy theorists in our own world. Uh So I just wanted to name a few of them here. I've got them written down. Um, The first one is convince the general public that there is an outbreak of a deadly new virus to sell the story, poison or otherwise kill people, then attribute their deaths to the phony virus. Two, once the fake pandemic is up, and this is all happening in the show, mind you. Once the fake pandemic is up and running and the public is terrified, announce that there is a vaccine that can defeat the virus. With the help of global elites, NGOs, and world governments, inject everyone on the planet with this vaccine as quickly as possible. 
surprise, the vaccine is designed to permanently sterilize all or all but a certain percentage of the people who take it. Sit back and relax as the global population drops from 7.8 7 billion to about 500 million in a single generation, ushering in a new era of plenty. Well, that last like statistic was far enough off to make me feel a little better about life. Right. It is. It, 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 this goes back to like the... So in the 60s, they had a movie called The Manchurian Candidate. Yes. And it was uh, part of everything going on with the wars and, you know, the policy at the time. They had to delay the film um, because, you know, too much was mirroring uh, reality. You know, it was art imitating life and so on. Right. So basically, uh, Amazon has continued. They will drop this on Friday. This show is coming out to all audiences on Friday. And already it's getting a bad word of mouth because of that statement. Not, not that the show is bad. I've watched two episodes myself. I think it's mediocre. It's somewhere in the middle there. Yeah. I think it's entertaining enough to stick with for one year, but you can kind of see the problem with it right away, especially with everything we're going through. Right. So my question is, do you guys think like, would you have taken the Manchurian route with this and delayed the show for a little bit until, you know, maybe next year? Or do you say, Hey, it's art. Art is expressive. You know, it should have, if you're Amazon, you want those eyeballs watching. I was going to say. So this creates the just the buzz you need. There you go. And, and even bad news is good news, right? right? Like bad publicity is good publicity. Yeah. My thing is, to your point, like it's mimicking reality. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that's not it's nothing that's not going on or that's not true. Like there's plenty of stuff that you could use to say, well, that's going to give people ideas. You know, yeah. there's enough that goes on in movies or video games or stuff that you could say, well, this is giving people a bad idea. Or they're going to go out and like copycat this or do it. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you cancel it because of that. I mean, there's been worse things that have happened. You know, yeah. there's been worse shows that have come out. So like it's the politicians who are labeling it irresponsible, obviously, like they're the ones who are timing for them. <laughs> right. So, yeah. you know, I just think it's kind of funny just the way like if it even dropped when the vaccines first came out, I wouldn't think it'd be as effective, but I think it's because it's right now. Yeah. You know, we're kind of between steps. You could argue two and three on that list. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we're at that point where, like you said, like it's far enough away right now, but man, what if we all were fucked? Like right. that, that yeah. would be something. But, but like you said, like it creates word of mouth. And I think ultimately that's, what's going to drive viewers to Amazon. Yeah. Um, hey, an interesting casting with John Cusack too. What's the last thing he's been in? <sighs> that I well he's been in a lot of straight to DVD movies has he he's he's more that Nick Cage role now yeah to where he's just he'll release a new movie every week and you're like oh shit I didn't even know that was out Ghost Rider 2 yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> there, right. there you go Ghost Rider 2 <laughs> god the frozen ground Mandy all these movies that came out in the last year good god he's in Con Air isn't he yeah oh, yeah with Nick Cage I wish Jesse was here he loves Con Air his favorite movie he could talk right about next it. to Shazam <laughs> um yeah okay but that's, that's our first story. Um, the second story, and what I find the more fascinating story, uh, news dropped today in the movie world that Tom Cruise's new film is going to space in 2021 to film with a movie with the help of Elon Musk's SpaceX shuttle Almanac. Um, oh, so it's for a movie? Yeah. He's actually going to space? Yeah, I guess to film a couple of stunt scenes. Hey, you know he does his own stunts. Cruise so. does his own. That's what I appreciate about his movies even still. Um, what's cool about this, though, is that it does combine, you know, real world science um obviously everybody knows elon musk and you know the kind of ideas that he's created over the last decade um interesting yeah it's it's, it's just I, I don't send a whole lot of citizens to space yeah like, yeah and that's the the thing i was questioning i'm like so a typical movie shoot they tell you you're going to be here this amount of days you know we'll, we'll get your hotel ready all this stuff all that what do you do pre to prepare for a role that's in space? Tom Cruise is a maniac. He probably loves this. <laughs> I was, yeah, dude, I love Tom Cruise. I'm yeah. a big fan. That yeah. dude is wild. I am too. What's your Just guys' favorite running for Tom days. Cruise? Oh, for shit. Yeah. <laughs> She'll run off the ship, yeah. man. With with a uh, bungee attached yeah. to him and just dive off into space. Dude, that's ballsy, man. I think going to space would be incredible. Yeah. But man, like, can't you recreate that here? I'm come saying, on, man. I mean, come <laughs> on. They, they filmed the moon landing in, in Arizona or something, so... <laughs> And it's going to be directed by Doug Lyman, who's the same guy who did uh, Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise. Good so, movie. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Huh. Um, well, that's pretty ballsy. Good for him. Yeah. Uh, trying to find more details on this, though. Right now, they're kind of hushed on how everything's happening. But they did say the it would involve a couple of key sequences from the movie in space. So, I mean, I guess if Fast and Furious is going to be there in the next movie, I guess, you know, Tom Cruise might as well be there, too. Right. <laughs> huh. But that's okay. all. Just some uh, short news this week. I'm curious to see that. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I don't I'm trying to think if I watched anything new recently. I need to watch Social Dilemma. Um, 
I've been watching a lot of, I watched Back to the Future. Oh, okay. The first one, one? Two and three. Okay. Like five or six times in the last week. I don't yeah. know why. I've just been putting it on in like the background and like watching it. Did you see the creepy kid in three yet? I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen him. Pointing to his crotch. Freaking. I think he had to go, what was it? He had to go to the bathroom or something. He's like, it was super weird. Super <laughs> awkward. And leave it in. I'm like, dude, cut that scene out. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why they didn't like pan or like <laughs> zoom off of him or something. It was super weird. Uh, that, I don't know if it was like a missed edit, but it's super odd. Um, no new news on movies coming out. Delays. Uh, we're still hoping for maybe uh, the new Bond is possible in November. Bond is still in November as of right now. Um, the next big movie, I guess you could argue, is there's a Vince Vaughn horror movie coming out called Freaky in mid-October. Um, it's basically like a Freaky Friday situation where he changes bodies with a teenager. Uh, she becomes the killer that he was, and then he becomes her a teenage girl. That's a weird role for Vince Vaughn. Yeah. Is it supposed to be a serious movie or a comedy? No, it's con- it's definitely okay. sticky, like you can tell. Um, but Are they shooting any new movies? Right now, no. Uh, the Walking Dead just started uh, filming their production again. Final season, right? Yeah, they're going to start that within the coming days. It's um, still, they're still making that show? I know, right? I know. It's like, uh, what, is it 11 seasons or something crazy? It, it will be the 11th is the last one. I think I stopped at like three. I did yeah. too. Three was my last one. I love the comics. I hate the show. Like, yeah. It was cool and like trendy, so I watched it because it was like the first new like real like zombie mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. And I, just, I made it to season five, I think. Yeah, I lost. Oh, it. okay. And I was out for so long. Yeah. This man's stronger than we are. Then it's right? just a soap opera, and <laughs> zombies aren't really a thing anymore. And that yeah. was my problem. Yeah. With it. I'm like, I forgot that this was a zombie show yeah. at one point. It did legit turn. It's a into new soap group opera. of people coming out of the woods to, yeah. to try and take over. So. Oh, he's an asshole, and you know she's I don't know a cheater or something like that. I'm like, oh great, <laughs> yeah. fascinating. Um, I've just been watching, uh, like Fargo came back last night, which I'm very excited about. It did yeah. look good. Oh I, my god, was it? See, the, the thing, like, the first three seasons are dynamite. Like, they're way better than the movie ever Do they was. continue, or does it start over each it's a, season? It's an anthology show. So, okay. like, every season, it's different characters, different story, different even setting. Um, I haven't seen that. This one's set in Kansas City, 1950s, um, at the heart of a big racial war between gang territories, uh, black and white. So, like, it, you can see how this is going to do well in current society Mm -hmm. um but the first episode was strange because as to where you kind of grab a hold of a character that's your favorite right away with this show and you go i'm that guy's cool i'm riding it out with him i don't care if he's bad whatever this one there's nobody really caught my attention right away like chris rock plays the central protagonist Mm -hmm. of the show and he's cool but you you can't he's been in serious dramatic roles before but you can't take him serious in this kind of role yeah not chris rock he's a gangster who's supposed to be menacing basically and you still hear that chris rock voice <laughs> you know so the hamster from dr Doolittle. <laughs> there you go so so that was my problem with it i think it's a, a cool enough storyline i can see how it's going to expand uh it seems like it has ties to season two which is pretty cool too but uh yeah that's what i've been watching i haven't seen that one um do we hear anything new about batman did they start production again? They did, yeah. Okay. And, uh, Pattinson returned. They were doing. They did ten days of shoots while he was under COVID. Oh, they were uh, going to go and film the scenes without him or whatever. Yeah, and then okay. he returned, and they they said they don't have much more to go though. I think they said by November it was going to be done. Dude, I'm so ready for that. Yeah, you into the? No, not your thing. I'm so pumped for that movie. Never been a huge movie, just in general. Movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's definitely a hit or miss. Like I don't know. I big Chris obviously. He writes movie reviews. I kind of like it. It kind of. <laughs> How many are you? Oh, at? I get it. Yeah. <laughs> How many reviews are you at now? Oh, reviews. Um, b- 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 fifteen fifty six. What's your favorite movie? Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Fifteen hundred fifty six. I've wild. never seen that movie all the way through. I wrote nearly three thousand words as a review on why it's my favorite movie and how hope is such a pivotal part of the film and our lives. So I should take a look. You've never seen it. Not all the way through. Oh, it's no. a good movie. Just bits and pieces. It was yeah. filmed an hour up the road. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's worth watching. I watched it a ton in, like, high school. Like, I don't know. I was, like, hooked on it. I'd watch it all the time. Me too. But even now, like, if it, like when I actually had, like, TV, like, cable TV, and it would come on, anytime it was on, I would watch it. Now it's on, like, Netflix and stuff. I'll watch it Did you it on see, there. I saw on someone's Instagram story, there's some art exhibit. Is, is it in Cleveland? But there was VHS tapes all over the place. Uh-oh. Oh. You kind of go find your favorite movie. Yeah, I know what or you're maybe talking about. Columbus. Jesse's in Columbus. Jesse, it's, um, yeah. Outer World. Yeah, Jesse yes. went to that. Yep. He was talking about that on an episode like a couple months ago. Yep. Um, it's Outer World. He was showing me like he pretty neat. took a picture of all the tapes and I'm like, oh my God, there's yeah. a good burger. Yeah. You know? 
Dude, my buddy, um, he lives in Arizona. He recently just got into doing um, like vintage resale. Mm. And he's been posting like VHSs for sale on there. And I'm like, people still buy those? I've oh, yeah. got a shit ton outside. Of I have about a thousand, yeah. Yeah, dude. I've got crates of those things. I'm like, should I unload these? Like, are people buying them? They're only like, you won't even get a dollar for he them. He's selling them for like 10, 10, 11 bucks. Bullshit. I swear. They have to be rare, man. Dude, he was selling like fucking like Pocahontas. Well, I got a thousand of them. I'm looking to unload Cash my VHSs. Dude, that's 10 grand. Yeah. What were you talking? You just picked up a stack of movies right Was yeah it DVDs? yeah so i got um i think i got 32 total from this weekend uh so now i'm over 5600 5600 dvds wild. dude well and vhs's all movies oh, whatever. as a whole yes. you gotta have like a cool projector set up and stuff right i wish <laughs> someday i'm just a poor white boy trying to make it in the hood <laughs> 70 inch tvs are like 600 bucks now yeah someday i'd love to is like trying to watch a vhs on that and like yeah. shit yeah i want to go to this guy's dad's house man yeah he's got the set theater up. he's got nice. um he built a new house about a year ago over in miles garrett's actually his neighbor okay uh that's and, ridiculous and he built a full movie theater in his basement like how cool is chair. that dude it's so dope it doesn't get used often enough like we're actually next saturday we're doing like a family movie night uh-huh can stay they get all the concessions and everything yeah. they go they're extra it's amazing but it's super cool uh um, ryan your friend broke in and he stayed the night down right. hey, <laughs> he's been here for 14 days <laughs> yeah. i'm on quarantine <laughs> hell yeah dude yeah, you got the collection you have is insane, man. And I used to be that way. Like I have a ton of DVDs somewhere. Mm-hmm. I used to have them all on display and everything like that. And now with everything digital, mm-hmm. and it's weird because I like the tangible. Like I was always like, I want the box. Like Our I case. like to have the case and everything. Um, but the nice thing with like the digital is I buy everything on Apple. And I can watch it on my iPad or my phone or my laptop. When I go on vacation, I have my whole video yep. collection there with me. Yeah. You know, um, so I like see- that with music. Yeah, well, yeah. What, what kind of music do you like? All uh, every, everything anything, eclectic. Yeah. Me too. Like yeah. I, the only thing I pretty much can't get into is like modern country. Like yeah, I, I, I love do. classic country, yeah, like nineties and you know anything before that. No great bro too. country. I can't oh, do it. Yeah, nah. like, I call it butt country. Yeah, you know because you're talking about a beer in the woods. Like there has to be a format to all these country songs. Like beer, woods, hot yeah. girl. Hey, it makes people feel good. I get it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, truck. Um, yeah, it's simple. I like the old country stuff too. I I, mm-hmm. I can't get into much of the newer stuff, but with Tim McGraw, Alan yeah. Jackson, Garth yeah. Brooks, all that. Like I loved John Michael Montgomery. John Michael Montgomery. <laughs> uh, I'm more of a kind of a rock kind of yeah, yeah me hip too. hop. Yep, rock's I do my vinyls. dominant. Yeah, I got some vinyls today from t- Target. Vinyl collections always so on point. That's what you say. And they always updated. I went today. I got Nirvana. Which one? I got Nevermind. Ooh. I got Eminem. And I got, what else did I get? Nirvana. Oh, REM. Which one? Uh, what's the one uh, I'm losing my religions on? I can't think of the album name. Yeah. But great vinyls, though. I love vinyl. Yeah. I collect the, those. I have the funds going and finding it, you know. Dude, it's so good. Target yeah. always has a good collection. Bomb Shelter, you can always pick up a yep. lot of good stuff. Square Records. Like, I love, um, that's one thing I will always buy physical. Like, just the no- the sound of vinyl. Yeah, I agree. It's un it's untouchable, man. I have a decent digital collection, but I love that stuff. So yeah, it's a lot of sorry, movies. I didn't mean to get you off movies here. No, oh, no, that's no Hollywood report, movies, video games. Music's one step music. under for me. It's right there. You guys so. do any video games? That's huge now. Yeah, I mean not now, it's been huge forever, but I de- I back and forth. Jesse's yeah. probably the big of us, probably the biggest into it. Um I've got all the systems, I just don't really have the time. Like I've got a switch that I'll I'll turn it on and I'll play every day for like two weeks and then like I haven't played it in months mm-hmm. and then I'll go through a phase again. Right now I've been playing Call of Duty. Jesse got me sucked into that and now I'm like hooked. Or I play it like at least every night, um, for the most part probably every night. But I used to be way more into them than I am now. Um, if I find the time, it's a kind of like just a relaxing thing for me more than anything. Like if I'm like beat or had a rough day sit down play some video games and it's just like i don't know take some rage out yeah it just it just like chill for me it's like soothing you guys collect anything else like baseball cards or yeah shoes that's yeah shoes vinyl i think movies is it well no movies and uh cowboy jerseys oh yeah how many do you have like Uh, dallas cowboy jerseys or 54 jerseys okay that's crazy yeah yeah what player do you have the most of 
Well, I have two Ezekiel Elliott's, two Emmett Smith's, and I have two Roger Staubach's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, dude. When you told me any like game worn, one, um, a Bob Lilly from 1973, which is the pride of my collection. I only bring it out for Thanksgiving. Really? Yeah. That's wild to me. Do you why why Bob Lilly? Because well, one, he's my favorite player. Okay. Uh, and two, like why the jersey was that? Well, no, I don't even know who he is. Like, oh, Bob Lilly was. Uh, he's thought of as the greatest defensive player in Dallas Cowboys history. He played from 1971 to 1982, I believe it was. Okay. Um, and just a monster. Yeah, of a player and uh, a good person too. He did a lot for charities and. Kids. How'd you come by a game worn Bob Lilly jersey? This guy was selling it on eBay and uh he had the COA with it too, mm-hmm. everything. So I, I had to know that it was authentic if I was gonna pay as much as he was asking. He wanted four fifty for it. I talked him down to three hundred. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's so when you see it it doesn't seem absurd. No, especially Not for a game worn no. too. Like that's pretty cool. They go your favorite player, for you know. A thousand easily these yeah. days. Um, but if you see the jersey, it doesn't look like a typical jersey from like today or anything. Like it looks like a sweater, mm-hmm. a- and it's it's all like it's dark blue. Um, numbers are stitched on and everything. Real warm. Is long, it the long, long sleeve one? Long sleeves. Yeah. So nice, man. Dope. Did you ever put it on? I did. Well, yeah. Like Thanksgiving's the only time okay. I ever wear it. Um, and I won't wear it out of the house. It has to stay in the house. Um, I, I go That's to awesome. movies on Thanksgiving. I'll change before I leave. I'm not if nacho cheese or anything spills on that shit yeah. dude, it's over can you wash you probably can't wash it no i just kind of um I'll lick it off air freshen it. <laughs> yeah, i know i'm, I'm very, sorry bob i'm right. very careful like when i eat i'm like this and yeah you have full-on cowboys bib or apron to wear with it when you <laughs> so, eat so yeah. you're just full of like anxiety on thanksgiving then right just worried the whole time <laughs> pretty much it, it, even enjoy this meal i can't well i mean the game's not bad enough because we're usually down 30 or 40 and then now i gotta worry about this bib <laughs> fantastic do you collect anything i don't really know no. I feel like I'm just a maybe Legos. In general. Oh, Legos Ooh. is good. Yeah, I've gotten back into that the last couple of years. Legos are awesome. Watch your yeah. feet. They're What's so that? expensive. Watch your feet. Oh don't yeah. Step on those bastards. They're so expensive. I'm an now. adult. They're not on the floor. Right. We don't have yeah. kids. They're built. Uh, I was looking at some not long they are ago. Expensive. I'm like 150 bucks for yeah. the Lego set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted some Star That's Wars. That's why I don't have a ton of here. them. You know. Yeah. It's like okay, you spend a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. For a few hours of joy. Right. And it just kind of sits there. So I've seen villages. Yeah, yeah. That's like with my shoes. Like I started building shoe display. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna do the. But I, I think in general I just collect like knickknack, just in, mm-hmm. stickers. Love stickers. I love pins. Uh, I've got a shit ton of pins. Oh, Disney that. pins specifically. I mean, not specifically, but I have a ton of those. Every time I go to the park, which is usually at least once a year, I have to get pins from them. I do the Star Wars like vinyl pops, cameras, like old cameras. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I just like in general. I just like tangible items. But I collect new players for our mini golf tournament every year. This is true. <laughs> I think I have a little OCD in in the bones, so I'm like, I don't like the stuff. I'm extremely OCD. I understand yeah. that. This room for me is very different than mm-hmm. my normal vibe because I am very like like there's a lot going on in here, and yeah. that's not how my mind normally works. Like everything has to be in order and clean. Like stuff being like crooked. Like in here, it works, but. Otherwise, like if stuff's not like, you'll constantly see me moving this because if it's not perfectly like perpendicular to the edge of the table, it drives me insane. Like if my laptop isn't spread evenly on the stand, it like bothers me. Like I have a lot of OCD. So let me let me so, tell you about OCD. So for about the last hour and a half, two hours we've been filming this show, yeah. I've been staring at your shirt over and over again because I'm I'm a freak wrestling fan, especially yeah. old school. And I'm like, I, I notice Ultimate Warrior and I notice Macho Man. And I remember that they did not face at WrestleMania six. They faced at seven. So I'm like, China, <laughs> China fucked up. It's bothering the hell out of me. <laughs> you still watch wrestling? Yeah, I, I do from time to time. It's definitely I try not. to kick it on and the wife always turn that shit off. I can't do it now. I used to love it, but it's, it doesn't have the same like nostalgic mm-hmm. vibe to me as it used to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't do it as much as I used to, but that's super funny. Cause I would have never known. I, I saw that target. I was I'm like, that's like, a sweet shirt. I'm a deep. Yeah, deep <laughs> stat. See, that, I'm telling you though, man, yeah. these dudes can pull those stats from nowhere. I'm well, like, because it's six. Ultimate Warrior faced Hulk Hogan, and then uh, Macho Man faced Dusty Rhodes. So, dude, you better write them. I don't know who made the shirt, but you better tell them to get their shit. I wonder if they've been called out for that, honestly. I don't know, but it's strange just seeing. I because even I had to think. I'm like, no, they faced at seven, which was at Los Angeles. Dude, that's super weird. Six was in Toronto. So who fucked that up? Oh, 
It's yeah. cool though. Yeah, and maybe I, it's a collector. I just thought it was cool. I was like, shit, I like this old school. Cause that's the wrestling. I like the old school stuff. So CD. well, OCD. we can do um, dude, OCD is <laughs> mine's more of an We've organizational, all issues. an organizational <laughs> OCD though is what bothers me. Like stuff has to be just clean and in order and have a place and, now it does now it's just because you did it now i'm like fuck focus one of my biggest ocds is i'm at if i'm at people's houses and like they've got pictures on their wall that are mm-hmm. crooked i will like yes. fix them and they're like, what the fuck? I'm like just sit down man it's crooked let me fix it for you i do it at work yeah dude my boss thinks i'm a psychopath he's not wrong people fuck with me because <laughs> they know it bothers me so they will People will do stuff like that intentionally just to piss me off. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's do locker room. That's the last segment we've got for tonight. For Jesse. Kick it off for Jesse and call tonight. Swung it and lined to deep left field. It is gone. 45-40. Run, William, run. 20, 50. Iguodala to Curry. Back to Iguodala. Up for the layup. Oh, blocked by James. LeBron James with the This is locker room talk. LeBron James finals for the tenth time, tenth time in a row. Mm-hmm. Well, well not he row. missed nineteen, but it, almost ten times in a row. Mm-hmm. That's impressive, man. Only three other guys have done it in NBA history. <sighs> yeah, so he's gonna face the Heat. So his old team, ring number four. Oh yeah, how many it's games? Just how many think? games? I think I'm saying five. So Jesse said five, and then I said six, but I think I'm more pushing to five because I think yeah. the Heat are gonna take game two. From there, the series will be even, and LeBron will never turn back. Yeah. The only time I see it going longer than that is I feel like that when they, when they try and say it's rigged, and like, well, for money, we're going to go seven games. If the Lakers' heat goes seven games, then it's rigged. Yeah. Because it shouldn't take that long. They're going to – he's not going to lose to them. I see the same problems, like who can guard Anthony Davis in this one. I think he's going to be the MVP of the series. Anthony Davis? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so that kicks off. When does that kick off? We have a little bit of a break. I thought it I was the Thursday. Day. Okay. I thought game one's Thursday. I know the Stanley Cup is game six tonight. Oh, wow. Who's yeah. playing in that? Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning lead 3-2 over the Dallas Stars, which is an upset. Not the Penguins or the or uh, Red Wings. Yeah. That's like the teams I'm used to hearing. Yeah. Uh, recently, it's been like, you know, Chicago or yeah. um, who won it last year. St. Louis won it last year. Interesting. Yeah. Um, let's see. So Wednesday is the first game. Wednesday at 9. I hate those West Coast mm-hmm. games. It's yep. so late. Yep. But it's not West Coast. It's in Florida. Oh, that is true. So why are they playing at 9 p.m.? <laughs> it's weird. It's just prime, I was thinking West time. Coast because the Lakers yeah. playing that it would be there. That's interesting. So nobody gets like home court advantage or anything. Technically, Miami's home. Right. And that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah, where, are they playing in Miami? So they play it's in that Orlando. They play in that okay. dome, whatever, the, the bubble. Yeah, I've been real unplugged on the NBA. So. Yeah. yeah. They play it. So they, which was probably a huge deal for Disney because they got shit on because of covid Mm -hmm. but they landed a deal with the nba uh, when covid all kicked off so the bubbles in orlando they're using the espn they have like an espn resort or like convention center and they've turned that into where the games are all played so it's only for like it was just for the playoffs or did they play a regular season there they did they they finished the memory they had eight games left but it's like one it's only like one game showing at a time because it's Mm -hmm. like they share one court or whatever so They've been in the bubble and they live there. And that's been another whole like big thing with mm-hmm. players. Like they're stuck there. They can't leave. You can't go like off campus. There's no family there. Players have been sneaking out to go to strip clubs and get chicken wings and whatever else. It's a mess. American so. dream. But that's a big deal for Disney. I mean, I'm sure that's a have you guys thought it's good either. basketball though? I think so. It's been yeah. There's some teams that have played good that like I'm like, man, if they had a full season, yeah. it would have been interesting to see how well they finished the year. Um, it's been good. Yeah, does I mean, this I've count been, as a yeah? You know, a, a full ring. They've debated right, people's yeah, minds. It's gonna have an asterisk. So yeah. they've had that with baseball too, because baseball had a sixty-game season. They said, so if the Indians win the World Series this year, is it a World Series ring? I think any fan would tell you, hell yes, it is. Like right. there's, for the Indians. there's yeah, nobody's gonna say this is half a ring. Right. Um, for me, yeah, I think it's because we're all under the same. It's not like some teams played 80 games and some teams played 40 games. Right. You know, we all played the same amount of games. So it's basically the best of whoever's left now. Right. And Miami went on a run, man. They were the ranked third in the East and they went all the way to the finals. Yeah. So give them credit. That's a good point, though. Like it wasn't, it wasn't an unfair advantage to anybody. Everyone played the same amount of time. 
everyone was affected for the most part the same by COVID. So it wasn't anybody had to play a full season and then they got to only play half and get into the finals, you know? So, well, and like my team, the Suns, that's what uh, a buddy of mine said, cause they went eight and oh, they were the best team in the bubble. Yeah. But before that they were horrible. They were 14 games under 500. Yeah. Just holding on to maybe a playoff spot. Um, my buddy goes, man, they went eight and oh, like they should be automatically in the playoffs just yeah. because they did that. And I said, yeah, but what did they do before the bubble? Right. They played like Some shit. They played good double basketball, man. They screwed themselves. You are all over the place. Phoenix Suns, Dallas Cowboys. Who's your baseball? There's a story for everything. Seattle Mariners. Seattle Mariners. Yep. Who are, I will debate this with Browns fans till my dying day. Yeah. The most cursed <laughs> franchise in sports. They had Ken Griffey Jr. They had Ken Griffey Jr. They had Alex Rodriguez. They had Randy Johnson. They had Edgar Martinez. They had David Ortiz all on the same team. <laughs> that's no, crazy. I didn't know that. No, no pennant. No pennant. Yeah, that's wild, man. Not even a World Series appearance. Because I don't think the Browns have ever had a roster that you could compare to that. So The Brown That good? Jim fucking Brown. Oh, Ozzie that Newsom. That many people on at one time? Yeah, Jim Brown, Ozzie yeah. Newsom, Jim Otto. Shit. Again, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so bubble basketball has been interesting. We got finals yeah. kicking off Wednesday. Yeah. Browns, another win. So they're 2-1. and one. It's the Washington Football Club. Me and Jesse's teams uh, had a good weekend. Chris, not so much <laughs> with the Cowboys. You're 1-2. and two. Yep. Steelers are 3-0. and oh, So we're off to a good start. I mean, granted, we haven't had super tough games to kick the season off. but I disagree with that after this week. So it, like, was, it was a decent game. The first two weeks, I was saying, yeah, the Steelers haven't really beaten anybody. I'm not impressed yet. Yeah. Houston has a legitimate defense. Yeah. And you guys hung, I think, 28 on them. Yep. It so was a good game. To me, that was a good win for the Steelers. I think if they keep it up, they have – there's a tough game coming up. I think Baltimore. I think it's like week five or six. Yeah, they got to show up in that game. Yep. Well, we haven't been we haven't kicked the season off at three and zero in a long time since so, uh, 2010. Yeah, Ben having a good comeback has has been nice. I still think we need to. Um, we have no backup plan, which worries me because if he's get injured again this yeah. season, we have nothing. Very vulnerable. We let Duck go. We can't rely on Rudolph. We've got nothing lined up. Yeah. So. There's some injuries, uh, quite a few injuries again this weekend. It's been consistent injuries every week. Niners, too. They had yeah, two everywhere. more across the board. <laughs> and man. the Niners still won. That's how bad the Giants Dude. are. <laughs> it's wild. Um, Browns played good. I mean, yeah. I don't I watch I watched the game for the most part. I was like doing stuff while it was on, but I don't think I had them at two and one. It's the first time they've been over fifty percent in a long time, too. We all called them two and one. Did we call him on oh, our picks? Did we? Yeah. I couldn't remember what I had him at this week. Jesse switched his Dallas pick, though, if you That's notice. Right. I so that. initially he said Dallas is going to beat the Browns. Now he goes, the Browns are going to beat Dallas. Now he's feeling a little on his high because they're two and one. Yeah. This guy. Now they, Jesse is like diehard Browns fan. Yep. Like tattooed on him. Like first I know word. A few of those people. I think yeah. his first word. Didn't he say his first word was Browns? Yeah. Like, dude is hardcore. Uh, it, there's no there. telling him wrong. Like, he is live and die. I respect that. those people. I'm a Browns fan too, but yeah, he is to go that deep with it for so many years. And I've never, I've never return. translated fan base passion to sports like that. Like I enjoy watching yeah. them, but I'm not like Steelers. I used win, to be into cool, it. I could name but, stats, players, all that stuff. Yeah. But I've never been. I enjoy watching it, but I can't do the. I don't know the players. I can't riddle off a roster. Or, uh, I don't know. I'll say this: Cleveland has not beaten anybody. Like, Washington is not shit. Yeah. Cincinnati's they had, worse. They had an easy start. Yeah. So, like, had they had that first game, had they played Baltimore even tougher, like yeah. lost maybe by seven or something like that, yeah. I'd have said, yeah, they're for real, man. They can play. Yeah. But I'm telling you, they're not going to have the offense to hang with Dallas this week. And they, I'm not saying that from a fan perspective. Like, legitimately, both defenses are trash. Yeah. They're not going to have the offense to compete. They succeeded this week, too, because they relied a lot heavier on the running game mm -hmm. than Baker having to throw. Yeah. I still think he has issues he needs to work I out. I still do, too. Um, it's too early on to give him too much credit yet because it was a lot of rushing, you know, mm -hmm. more so than passing. I think you got to keep doing that and just pound those two back. If, that's, if you're finding that's what's working, I guess work it. I mean, Chubb was killing it. I mean, he, uh, he did good. Um, Kareem Hunt had Kareem a good game, Hunt, too. I was going to say Hunt. Yeah. They both had a real good game, so. I'm glad I'm done playing them in fantasy. I had them for two straight weeks uh, against random opponents. Yeah. I'm like, I fucking hate playing against Nick Chubb, dude. I'm yeah, tired of this. He's good, man. 
He had like so many yards, like the mo- two consecutive games with some kind of record or something. He said for, for the Browns, yeah, because yeah. like recently, back in the day, they had tons of great running backs. Yeah. But last 10, 15 years, not so much, right? So yeah, he's really I like him. He's the team leader, man. And then there was um, a record or history was made with the Watt brothers. Three of them played against mm-hmm. each other all on sun on Sunday. Oh really? Oh yeah, I guess it's that's just true. Two on the Steelers, and then. Uh, Wow. One's on the other team, so that's pretty cool. I didn't hear that. How cool would that be, though? Yeah, all three of you in the holidays NFL at that family sounds yeah. gonna be pretty fun. God, they got some money. It's man. so rare you get that chance. Like LeBron's hanging on, so he gets to play with his, his kid. Son. You know, like we had that with Ken Griffey and his dad yeah. for one game. Wasn't there some controversy with LeBron's son? Oh, smoking for the, some weed. Smoking yeah, nugs you guys were saying that. He yeah. accidentally he accidentally posted a video of him smoking yeah. a joint or something. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, come on. Hey, pass it to your daddy. All right. Yeah, come on. I don't know if Ron would, honestly. He's so, like, his body is a temple. Mm-hmm. I would be curious to know if he smokes, honestly. He smokes cigars. No, that is true, I guess. So Loves his he wines. Does. He's a wine whore, man. Yeah. I mean, I don't care if he smokes pot. I'd just be like, I'd be interested to see if he puts that in his body just because, like, mm-hmm. that dude takes care of himself. Man. Wouldn't that be weird, though? Like, as a 16 year old kid, yeah. something you put online has, like, a ripple effect through the whole like media that, of yeah. all the people that are smoking pot every day. And it's yeah, it's strange because he's a kid at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, it's like of course he's going to do stupid shit right. like that. It it happens to all of us. It's so silly. It's because yeah, I mean obviously because LeBron's kid. Like yeah, oh LeBron, what's your kid doing? Who cares? Let yeah. the kid be a kid. I would love to see him, and I'd be curious to see if he play if they play together, how that works. Yeah, I mean you you think about it. He's is he a junior or senior this year? I think he's a senior this year. So he has to do one year of college. Yep. So two more years he'll at be. At the end of LeBron's L.A. career will be the first year he's eligible to be drafted in the NBA. Yeah. Because everyone was saying, well, he's only going to sign a four-year because then he'll have the opportunity to sign with whatever team Bronny goes to and try and play together. I want to see him block his kids. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, well, it'd be better to watch him play against, against each, each other. other. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what Just if it give com- him no mercy the whole time? That's what I'm wanting. Yeah. So, so if it comes down to a big game where, like, you're in, say, the game seven of the finals or something, and Bronny's got the ball to win the game, does he step up and play defense? Oh yeah, and, you know, oh, yeah. knock him down. I think though, like compared to his dad, like Bron is a beast, dude. I mean, Grant, look at how scrawny he was when he was playing at St. V to yeah. where he is now. But it's crazy to see, like, to think of Bronny. No pressure playing. for that kid. Right, man. Like, Bronny's the, not a big the dude. most elite athlete maybe of all time. I know. Ever. And I got to play against him for one yeah. game. Yep. Boy, it was humiliating. <laughs> dude, he's a monster. He's taking such good care of himself. So, I'll be, I'll be curious to see what happens at, at the end of his Lakers run, where he goes, what he does, how many more years he's got in him. I mean, the dude's still playing elite mm-hmm. basketball, so he's got time left. Well, and, and, like, they've looked at his numbers compared to, you know, like the scoring leaders and stuff like that. And the reason why Braun has a chance to, as to where, like, Durant and these other stars of today don't, injury-free, man. Yeah. If you keep that going, if you have a healthy, you know, 70, 80 games a year, like, yeah. dude, the, the numbers are yours. For, for his stature, like, it's so interesting to see the way that he carries himself. Like, he's not in the media for – negative stuff ever Mm -hmm. he takes care of himself he's not out partying and doing drugs you know that we know of like he doesn't he lives like a a pretty well lifestyle and yeah i mean he's in amazing shape he's never out for injury he was injured in 2019 but i don't remember really what he was out for it wasn't much it was i think at the most it was like 10 games or something yeah like he's his body heals supernaturally And, and I think, like, as a testament to what you said about how, you know, disciplined he is, yep. it's kind of surprising because of where he came from and, like, right. what he's had to overcome. Yep. Like, that's, I think, the most... Uh, Very poor. The biggest and, case to his character. Absolutely. It's come a long way. I mean, in the amount that he gives back because of it and does for the community still, yeah. even though he's not, you know, he doesn't live here anymore, is pretty cool. So, I'll be, I'll be happy to see him win this year. Be a good testament, a, a good... Um, tribute to Kobe, you know, the Lakers winning this year with him passing and stuff. So, well, he would have four, Kobe had five, and Jordan had six. So, he's, he's got a couple more years in there. Him. He's 36. Yep. He's, I mean, he's playing his best basketball. He definitely has the opportunity to win a couple more rings. I mean, the Lakers could go on and be repeat. Oh, yeah. Well, easily. The thing is, like, the Warriors are going to be back next year, but they don't have anybody size wise who can put up against Anthony, Anthony. Davis. It's going to take these teams are going to have to start drafting these big men again. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I mean, it'll be a real, a real season too. So we'll have to see if what, how that kind of plays out. Because it's true, then the, the the season should be 
kicking off the new season should be kicking off here soon well november but the nba has already said don't look for a season until january i was gonna say what are they gonna do i gotta imagine they gotta push it back there's got to be some downtime yeah. recovery because draft too like you know yeah. they, they got to get all the new talent in they got to get them worked out and everything otherwise you're gonna have another nfl season where everybody's getting injured again because of yeah. no conditioning in the preseason it's gonna kind of throw everything off because then you start january so then it goes later so then they gotta i mean next year then end of next year they could probably get back to a normal schedule but everything's kind of shifted yeah who knows what even happens freaking next year we don't even know fucking fucking covid we didn't think it'd be this long i did not man i did not think we'd still be talking about this right now when this all kicked off in february those Dude. first few episodes are funny though i know <laughs> <We're> like... <laughs> our stances in february compared to where we're at now is completely different time gives us all a different perspective Dude. Right? very humbling yes. yeah it's wild we took some shit too. Yeah, we got some shit for, for the show. We continue. We were doing the show still in person for a while when we oh, probably okay. shouldn't have been, and then we transitioned to Zoom, and then mm-hmm. we came back maybe sooner than some people thought we should have. And whatever. We were all six feet. I can't touch you. So everyone's anyhow, gonna be okay. I agree. I think. Yeah, I agree. It it's coming around. So, um, I think that's all we really got. Anything else for sports? We hit all of our we hit all of our categories. Um, I think that's really all that we've got for tonight. Appreciate you coming on and hanging out with yeah, us, Sean. Thanks for letting me come hang. Absolutely, anytime. We love having guests on. It just kind of breaks up uh, the monotony of me, Chris, and Jesse just bickering mm-hmm. and talking shit to each other. It's so. good because I knew nothing about his profession beforehand, so like it's good to get some kind of insight into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So yeah, make sure you check Sean out. Um, on Instagram, Facebook, his website, you know, I'll have all the links and stuff again. Like even if you're not looking to get an interior done, it's just cool to look at. There's some really cool stuff on there. So check that out. Um, Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you share, subscribe, like Venmo challenge, uh, MTM podcast. We are still doing that. We're just shy of our second giveaway. We need like 19 more bucks. So if you'd like to contribute to that, maybe we can do that this coming weekend and we'll have a video for you guys next week. Um, otherwise, we will catch you on episode five. Podcast.